Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to a special episode of the Format Podcast Live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And um, I know it's Friday night and uh, normally we do our lives on Wednesday and Saturdays. But as I told you, um, sometimes we're going to go live at different times to do different things. And tonight is one of those nights. As you can see, G's not here, but we got another special guest. We got our main man, Q. Host of the Opinion Stated Podcast. What's good, Q? What's good? What's good, fellas? Glad to be here, man. Let's go. All right, all right. And tonight, what we're we gonna do, y'all? I'm sure you've uh, seen from the from the thumbnail already. If you've clicked on it, and as well, you see from the rundown, what we are gonna do is with the NBA season starting on Tuesday night, we are going to do a 2024-25 NBA season preview, the format podcast style. But before we get into that. We'll go ahead, take a couple minutes, um, see if anybody's, uh, see if some more people, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to uh, pop up in the chat, and then we'll go ahead and go from there. Um, yeah, man. So uh, it's good to have you, Q, man. All right. Well, um, yeah. So we we are gonna definitely, um, we're gonna go over this uh, NBA uh, season uh, preview, and like I said, my man Q, he's gonna lead this. This is his baby, and um, as I was saying, I know he's super excited about uh, the the upcoming NBA season. So. Before we get started, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't okay, it looks like we lost q again man that, that's tough um <clears throat> what, what's up with this man celtics have 18 so banners you're behind what, what do you what, what, what is that about I'm just, I was, I was, who are you talking to? Nobody said anything about man. nobody said all he said. I see the Kobe jersey in the I, background. No. My man wasn't being disrespectful. Okay. No, My man no. was just observing the background of what you had in his background. I'm, you, I'm just, just saying, got 18 banners. You're behind. Can't talk to you. Catch up. I'm just saying, you know, if that was me, I would have to sit silently in the corner, you know, like a loser. <laughs> Until I could catch up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would sit, I would sit and wait my turn while the big boys talk, you know. All right, yeah, whatever. But I don't want to hear all that. We ain't trying to hear all that. Okay, okay. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, it looks like we lost opinion stated. Listen, I'm sorry, everybody. We're definitely having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we are working to get this resolved. So please bear with us while we do that. Uh, Laker Nation that says, who has more since 87? We're not talking about that, man. Yeah, they are not talking about that, man. Them Bill Russell back in the 1930 championships. <laughs> you, you think Jerry West cares about who has more since 87? God bless the day. I mean, at this point, he up in heaven chilling, so he, he don't <laughs> care about nothing right now. You know, you know what I just thought about? You know what would be so ill? What's if uh, freaking uh, Mr. Russell and the rest of the Celtics greats are up there, and they running fives against Jerry and Wilt and them. How ill oh, would that absolutely. be? That, right? Oh, absolutely. Right? You know I'm pretty sure Kobe giving this? somebody the business right, right now. Yes. <laughs> giving them the Dude. business. Ooh. Oh, you said that when oh, you, you think it's hard for us to survive back in that era? Right. Baby, please. Right. I'm, I'm baby Jordan out here. What you mean? Man, listen. <laughs> Man, Kobe, Jerry West. Oh, yes. my goodness. Wilt and Ain't any no two business. others. Hey. <laughs> You know Bill up there talking cash. You already know. Cash. Like, you already know. Wow. Hey, what did he say at the uh? Who, who's who's That's Hall of Fame was that? Part. When he was like, he he counted them all out. He counted Shaq, Charles, mm -hmm. and he was like, "I'll bust all y'all asses." <laughs> who said that? Oh, bro, you remember that? No, Mr. I Russell got, said I got, that. Yeah, bro. He like it was. I forget what a it was an award or something. Uh -huh. And Bill walked up to the mic. And yeah, he, he counted and like he started pointing at him like, Mom, I'll kick all y'all's asses, <laughs> like bro. And everybody went crazy laughing, yeah, bro. It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. yo, that's, that's Bill right there. 
Yeah, that would be. I'm that, a, I'm a find that, I'm a find that for you, and I'm a, I'm gonna send that to you, man. But yes, that's Mr. Russell, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, I I can't even imagine the greatness of the games that's going on up there, man. Boy, Jeez. we just can't wait to be a spectator. <laughs> no, nah, I could wait. <laughs> oh no, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I'll take right, that right, back. Right. I'll take that back. <laughs> but you know, God willing, one day that's gonna be a wonderful thing to be able to just sit back in the bleachers up there and just just watch those games, man. Those gotta no, be some man. incredible runs. You know I wonder, what? I wonder is God charging tickets up there? What's the ticket prices going for? <laughs> I don't know. Man. But I tell you what, though, man, listen, mess around. The mama gonna have Gigi running point out that joint. Boy, look. What? Listen, Don. <laughs> man, yeah. that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh man, so oh, here we go. So look, I, I just so now uh Mr. Russell. Could play with Bill Walton, and that's our twin towers, bro. Ah, uh, yeah. Bill getting cooked by the Lakers in five. Uh, Lakers mm. in five. Lakers in seven. As much as I hate to say it, Lakers in Lake, seven. Lakers we don't have five. anybody that can deal with uh the Mamba. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, nobody. <clears throat> no, uh, Lakers in seven. Lakers in seven. Lakers in five. You're not getting it in five, nah. Because Lakers in because five. Mr. Russell, you know. He Mr. Can, Russell, want to tussle? I love the hustle. <laughs> oh, my. oh man, that's a cheese. I bet Russell did it. Lakers in five. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All I'm right. gonna find that clip, man. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and search for yeah. that clip right now. Man. Yeah. That's that's a funny clip. Oh man! All right, we ready? Opinion stated. You good, Q? Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I think I should be simulcasting right now, man. That's, I don't know why I kept trying to knock me out instead of uh, going in there. But I had to log in, log back out again, so it should be all right now, hopefully. Okay. If okay, my folks, you sound good. Pause. Yeah, if my folks can see, uh, you know what I mean, the, the dual broadcast, man. Welcome welcome to to the show for tonight. And, um, man, collaborating with the with the Format Podcast bros, Transformers in here, and Bruce. And let's get that one. We got yeah. back all coming up, man. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, sir. Get it. Who's your Who's your team, by the way? Who Who's your? Yeah, team? But you know what's crazy, man? Is I I mentioned this to you before. If I had to have a team, and I don't anymore, right? I don't necessarily do fandom that way, but yeah. um, but I'm an old school New Jersey Nets fan from, from oh, Derek, wow. yeah, from Derek Coleman, Drazen Petrovic, Chris Morris, you know what I mean? Chris Dudley, yeah. those the, like those uh, Scott Skiles, Skiles was there like a long time ago, bro. But um, yeah. but these. More a basketball fan, but I'm still affection to the Nets. So even when Durant and them went over, when Vince and them was there, man, competing for championships, I was st I still root for them. You know what I mean? I okay. Yeah. So if I had I to have you. a, it would be them. But they the bottom of the barrel of the East now, man. So it don't even. Oh matter. no, definitely. Why you bring? Why you bring stuff, man? You see what you just did, transform. <laughs> what? <laughs> the wounds, bro. <laughs> no, I'm I'm curious because I mean, obviously, I have my Lakers gear on. I'm a Die Hall Lakers fan, been that way since '96. But you have the reason why I became a fan in your background in Kobe being Bryant. So that's why I wanted to just elaborate to the viewers. Okay, yeah. who is this team? Because they're automatically like, no, 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 here Kobe fan. But I see nah. a Carmelo jersey. So there you go, I got Kobe and Melo back here. That's because they're my guys, man. Like. Like Bean was, um, Bean was special, man. He, he's different, yeah. you know what I mean. So, I don't think you can call yourself a basketball fan, period, and not be a fan of Kobe Bryant. I, I look at everybody right. sideways, not a fan of Kobe, bro. Kobe was just, he was a different animal. I, I almost, I almost dislike it when people compare Kobe to Mike and they and, and they use it as a way to disrespect Kobe by being like, well, he was the second coming of Jordan, so it don't really count because it's like you're not acknowledging. How dope this dude was, bro! Yeah. Like doing that, and I don't, I don't like it, bro. So, but I love me some Kobe, man. Kobe was, yeah. That dude was one of them ones, bro, for sure. I, mm -hmm. I do, I do or, like it, man. When you're a Laker and you can garner the respect of the entire Boston Celtic fandom nation, I think you, I think you did it. <laughs> I think you did it, man. Yep. I mean, you know, our rivalry goes oh, back sure. into ancient <laughs> times that were before all of us were even born, or even thought of, um, and to have, you know, by the time he retired. You know, even Celtics are like, Shit, bro, salute that, Mister. But we had problems with that dude. <laughs> we couldn't, we couldn't wait for him to retire and get out of the NBA because, boy, we we got nervous. Y'all crept up to fifteen championships, sixteen, and it was like, oh snap, y'all might take it over. So when he retired, they were like, thank you, baby Jesus. 
Wow. <laughs> so real quick, Bruce, you, fan. say again, man. Bruce, you're a Boston fan, huh? Die hard, man. Since I was eight years old, 1986, bird waving the towel in the garden. Wow, Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, what, what I was going to say is um, those people, you said that anybody who says they're a basketball fan and don't respect Kobe, you got a problem with them. But there are a lot of people who will try to convince you of that. But the truth is they're really LeBron fans. And what they're doing is they have to take shots at Kobe to try and lift him up. It's it's what they do. That's what it is. Like you look, look in the comments right now. You see Bruiser Sue, Kobe to Timu Jordan. You know what that is. Bruce is a LeBron guy. Bruce, man, come on, Bruce. It'd be hard to defend the, the king, right? Not my king, all right? The king. When we saying <laughs> stuff like this, man, damn. Uh, I quit, bro. I'm logging off, bro. Uh, Y'all got it. <laughs> what you say, Transformer? Not my king. Not my king. Not, Not my, my king. king. <laughs> Not my king. Not Let my me tell y'all about my king and the bears. <laughs> the bears. The bears. <laughs> All right, I'm let's like, you don't know going. that joke. You got to get game on that joke. Oh, that's right. He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> got to love it. <clears throat> but, yeah, man, Kobe, Kobe was that guy. So I, I, I can appreciate what Kobe brought to the game of basketball. You know yeah. what I mean? With, I was never a Laker fan. Never in my life. You know what I mean? But, you know. Don't say it I like respect, that. It sounded disrespectful. No, I'm just saying. But I, I just respect, I respect game. And that's all. Uh, man. I mean, so like like we were having a conversation. I'm 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 born and raised in Washington D.C. You know what I mean? I'm D.C. to the heart, and so by nature, by virtue of being from D.C., even though there are a lot of Cowboys fans, oddly enough, in D.C. Crazy word. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm Redskins, bro. It's, it's I can't even help it. It's just in me. You know what I mean? Commanders, commanders. I want to get canceled. Bro, commanders. You know what I mean? Now, right? <laughs> see, how, see how deep it runs with me? I can't even Redskins, man. The scans. So I just say the scans, right? That's better. But, that's better. But even even in even in as as these cowboy fans like to hang on, and I know this is an NBA show. We're gonna get to the NBA in a second, but I just want to say this for emphasis. Cowboy fans hang on to the glory years, and then in the nineties, when they had Emmett, Aikman, you know what I mean? Uh Irvin. out on one side, uh 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 your man the big coke snorter on the other side. Irvin. They, Michael Irvin. <laughs> they know about the backfield too, Moose. Bro, they was incredible, bro. Yeah. They were incredible. But I, I watched because, one, they were on TV every single week, but secondarily because they were just good on both sides of the football. So Absolutely. How do you, if you're a football fan, it's like, bro, this is how football is played when you put a, a great team together, man. So yeah, I'm a fan of the games, bro. I'm, I'm just a fan of sports, man. So it doesn't matter who it is. I, I don't hate on folks just because they play on the opposing team. I like you. I like you, bro. If you, you're a good sports, you know what I mean? A good sportsman, you're a good sportsman. You're yeah. a great athlete. Great athlete. So I love it, man. I love it. Pretty much everything you just said about the Cowboys, man. That's what that's what Jerry Jones is holding on to dearly. Right. And I think he needs to let that baby go. That glory. <laughs> you need to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> what you and did back in the 90s, bro. It's okay. That's let it done. go. Let it go. Let hey, it yo, go. Bruce. Bruce, you gotta follow that with a pause and no diddy something, man. Cut that out, man. That's that's terrible. Right, what are we doing? Greatness. Oh, what are we doing? Yeah, but that doing? did sound crazy. And then, then look, look a little crazy. But anyway, man, we're going to get on to the good stuff for the good stuff, man. We Let's got go. Q here today. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about, you know, a lot of good things about basketball, a yes. lot of bad things about basketball. We're going to try to keep yes. this conversation minimal when it comes to any type of GOAT debate. We're not doing that. Tonight is good, not Thank for God. That. All right, because Q That's don't right. like it. I don't like it. Bruce right. loves to bring it up. But we're going to move on over. All right. Not <laughs> a not another go debate video. No, please no. Please no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but Q, man, what you got for us? We got the beast of the East. I'm gonna let you take it from here, brother. That's about yo. So, so as far as I'm concerned, and um, you know, Bruce and I were having a conversation offline about this a couple of days ago. So I think that the Celtics return back to the top of the East. I think that they are the premier of the East, and um, you know, they are definitely the team. Obviously, not just because they won the championship last year. Obviously, a, a person could look at it and say, "Well, they won the championship, so of course they'll be the target of everybody, right?" But it's not just that; they are the class of the Eastern Conference because of the talent that they have, the team that they have, and by virtue of how long they've actually played together. So I think mm -hmm. that they are the most seasoned collection of players in the Eastern Conference. 
They finally got it together. I'm old enough to remember when folks were going on TV saying, I think it's time to break up. You know what I mean? I think it's time to break up Brown and, and, and Tatum. And um, you know They're what I mean? still having that conversation. Which is weird, right? It's really, yeah. really strange because it takes time, man, for everybody to, to, to figure it out. And they figured it out as a mob. And so I think that they're the class of the Eastern Conference. I have them returning back to hmm. the upper echelon of the East this year. I have them as the class of the East. I don't know what you all think about that, but um, I, I know I know what Bruce thinks about it anyway. But what about you, Transform? What do you think about about Boston? Thank you for you know asking me first, all right? Because I don't want this man's head to get any bigger than what it is. If not, we're gonna have to blow up his screen to make sure we move over to the side. So anyway, when we get over to your question here, Q, <laughs> I think um. The talk of uh the the biggest talk is that you know whether they whether or not they're going to repeat. I don't believe that they're going to repeat, right? Um, I think that, and even Bruce can attest to this, and he's been done a great job of saying it that they had a little bit of an easier schedule um if, as far as teams to play when it came to the playoffs. That all of the competition either got hurt or eliminated or both, right? You know, so they didn't really face any real adversity um until they got to the NBA Finals, and then they get a, they did a great job of battling um the the Dallas Mavericks, I believe. Um, in the finals, you know, their first time being there as well. Um, well, not, not even as well as the Boston, because that's their second time being there as a teammate. Um, but um, I don't see them being uh, repeaters, but I do see them finishing at minimum top three in their Eastern Conference uh, because of the continuity. I mean, they do have the most continuity of the entire bunch. Right. Um, the Knicks, as you guys can see, that those they're still piecing guys together. Milwaukee's trying to figure it out. Like, you know, they were very injured last year, especially when it came to the playoffs. When you lost Giannis and you lost Lillard, um, Lillard excuse me. Um, and then you have uh, the 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 Phil I almost said Philadelphia Eagles, the 76ers, who just got Paul George. So a lot of a lot more continuity with that team. They kind of got that, hey, we can stick together, run this thing back, and we can get this thing done. Um, another year with Drew Holiday, another year with Christoph Porzingis, um, uh, Al Horford is still coming back. So you guys are coming back pretty much at full strength that you guys just won the championship with. And and you just came off of winning an uh, Olympic ring together. Granted, it was two of y'all um, uh, together with it, but you know that's still a little bit more continuity of being on the court together. Th oh yeah, correction, three, um, three players oh. that were in there. Should have been four. Should have been. Correction. Correct. Been. Correct. 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 Should have been four. But I do. I, I agree so, with you. To jump right in where you are, bro, not to yeah. cut you off, but that's exactly why I think they return back to the upper echelon of the East. It's, it's by virtue of that continuity that you're talking about and also because of how well chemistry all work together, bro. So this is not an experiment with them. This is this no. year. These brothers taking some time to get here. So I believe that they return, you know, back to the tops of the East and they actually will defend their championship. You know what I mean? This year. I think they'll be the first team to defend in, in, in a while. I oh, like that. All right, Bruce, we'll let you speak. So, um... <laughs> Transforming. No, no, this may surprise you, man. And uh, Q and I, we did discuss this offline. And, you know, I'm the big guy. One of my favorite lines is two things can be true. Right. And okay. I truly believe that, especially in this case. Right. So one of the things that I've said uh, pretty much since last season ended and then with the Olympics and all that, all that that G loves to point to is with Jason Tatum, kind of his Olympic experience, especially after what he was able to accomplish last year, finally becoming a champion third straight year as first team all NBA, et cetera. And um, with uh, uh, Jalen Brown being snubbed from the Olympics and not making any all NBA selections or regular season awards, despite, you know, the, the, the player that he's become, I think both of those guys really have uh, a lot of incentive. And this may be the impetus for that team to go on something of a, of a revenge tour. Right. So that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin, as you mentioned, Transformer, and this is something that we both wholeheartedly agree on. The Celtics caught a ton of breaks throughout that playoff run last year. Now, the Warriors at times caught breaks um, going through the playoffs, but I don't know that I've ever seen a playoff run resulting in a championship like what the Celtics did last year. Mm -hmm. Everybody, to your point, either got injured or um, or eliminated. And so the Celtics had one of the easier runs to a title ever, despite the fact that, in fairness, they were arguably the best team in the league yeah, all year. And no, to, absolutely. Right. And to Q's point, I do believe that this is a team that will have, you know, obviously barring injuries, of course, have a lot of success this year, remain one of the top teams in the East. But I honestly have a hard time seeing them repeating as champion. Now, that said, 
I also can't at this point identify who might be uh, the team that can beat them and knock them out in the East. Obviously, we'll see as the season goes on and develops. But I just think like it's going to be hard to repeat knowing that they weren't necessarily tested. That said, back to the other side of the coin, I'll say there is also something to now knowing what it takes to win and having the exactly. quote unquote championship medal, right? Yeah, Having tasted exactly. the champagne, right? And especially, and uh, Transformer knows this being, being a Laker guy and I'm a Celtics guy. We know that for our teams, when a guy wins his first title, okay, now you can walk into the house, right? You don't have to stand in the yard anymore, but there's still a lot of rooms you can't get into, right? Only having one. And so now these guys are saying, okay, um, Mr. Russell has 11 and, and Bird has three and so on and so forth. And now if we get another one, we can pass Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. Those guys were great Celtics, but we can pass them if we can get another one. And now we can maybe really start carving our legacy in, you know, a top two franchise all time in the history of the game. And so I think these are things, you know, those motivating factors are going to be something special for the Celtics and to Q's point earlier. And I'll, I'll wrap with this. Um, like you guys both said, the continuity that they have, the slow cook that the Celtics organization went through, because this is such a microwave society now, and it has kind of passed over to sports, and especially, too, with free agency and with the super teams, we kind of feel like, okay, just throw a bunch of stars together, they'll make a run at the chip. But no, the Celtics did the old-fashioned way. They drafted, they developed. Of course, their front office made trades as well, but they drafted, they developed, and we saw over time – multiple uh, appearances in the conference finals and then a finals appearance, which they lost. And then they finally got over the hump. So there's something to be said for all of that experience, all of that continuity, and now finally knowing uh, what it takes to win and get championships. And so it wouldn't surprise me if the Celtics got back in the finals. And I know this is kind of like flip-flopping, but it also wouldn't surprise me if they didn't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Brandon Bryce was good. NBA sucks compared to NFL most times. I don't fight. Yeah, listen, I, I I totally get it, B, and you know I agree with you on that. But this is an NBA preview show for the season, man. We got to do this. <laughs> so work with me here, brother. Work with me. But but I feel you. I, I know what you mean. No, I was gonna say I, I was gonna say to B Bryce, and, and I can appreciate that too as a sports fan, because mm -hmm. you know I, I I was telling Bruce um, a few days ago on on a phone call that I put the NFL down for a while. You know what I mean? Just through disappointment of a lot of the rule changes and kind of some of the things that I saw that I didn't like that took away from the integrity of the NFL that I fell in love with. And I'm feeling mm -hmm. the same way about the, the NBA. So, so, so Bruce, uh, Bryce, I, I mean, Brandon Bryce, I can, bro, I can, I can be touched by exactly what you're saying, bro. Um, but I want to, I want to, I want to say one thing on, on what Bruce was saying. Right. So not only, the, and, and to bring together snowball, kind of what Transformer was saying, not only the continuity, right. That we agree on, but I think if there was a time for Boston to lose and continue to losing, it would have been last season when they seemingly put it all together. It takes it, and it requires a certain amount of luck for everybody at some point to, you know what I mean? I mean, a, a championship run is magical, bro. You know what I mean? So you have to have a lot of things and a lot of teams, every team almost, you can go back and search through all the history of championships where you will see injuries come into play mm -hmm. for certain teams and what, right. what would have happened this player didn't get hurt or if this player didn't get dinged up, like what would have happened if Brooklyn, if, if Kyrie doesn't go down with that ankle injury because of Giannis getting under him, you know what I mean? And then uh, Harden coming up with that, with, with the hamstring, KD's foot being too long on the line still, which would have given him time to kind of heal up a little bit. So it's all these what ifs that always happen. And you need that certain amount of luck, you know what I mean? To fall in your favor. But I think that again, if there was a time for them to lose and not to, to finally, you know, step up, and rise to the occasion, it would have been last season. They Losing Ime Udoka, I thought, was going to be the thing that kept them down. And they did not lose Ime, you know what I mean? Or, or they rather, did. they did not try it after Ime. They, you know what I mean, inserting a, a brand new coach, bro. You know what I mean? Figuring it out. You know what I mean? So, so big ups to them. And I think that with the snubs in the Olympics, which you guys mentioned, yep. you know, Jalen Brown, with – Tatum going over there, not getting the rep that he wanted, being disrespected, downright disrespected over there. I think yep. that that gives an extra little chip that they otherwise may not have had. You know what I mean? So more incentive to come in here and really get it done, bro. So I, I think that for those reasons, we're going to see 
you know what I mean? These brothers really come out, man, and, and, and put it all together this year. And not to mention, they also were without Porzingis for a majority of the season last year, and they'll be without yeah. him until after January. Mm-hmm. So I think that they will be – Really? What happened? He, the, the surgery and see the in recovery so he's, he's getting himself back back in shape Dang, right I didn't even so, know that. yeah so it's going to be the same so same as last year in that regard where like bruce said they were arguably not tested you know what i mean a lot and they were well arguably uh you know what i mean the the, the best in the league period you know what i mean i i, I caught a hundred dollar bet from a homie you know what I mean? Just that they were the class because he's a, you know what I mean? A Milwaukee fan. He was like, man, y'all sweating Boston, yada, yada. Now, you know, again, I don't like Boston, but I'm saying I, I, I trust what I see. Yeah. And so I trust what I see from last year and what they're bringing back this year enough to still keep them. I'm not Vegas. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to go crazy trying to make anybody else a favorite over the defending champions until the defending champions show me otherwise. But I don't see any reason why they, they, they should take a step back, honestly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and uh, let, let's move on from uh, the Celtics and let's kind of we don't have to run down the entire East, but we saw a number of moves that uh, Eastern Conference competitors made to try and narrow the gap between themselves and the defending champions and, you know, possibly knock the Celtics off of that off of that perch. Um, and I'll I'll say the first one will go to uh, the, the mega trade call Anthony Towns coming over from the Western Conference with the. Uh, uh, T Wolves and coming back home to New York. He grew up a Knicks fan. He's a Jersey kid, um, and so you know, like a lot of Knicks, uh, like a lot of young New York kids, it's it's probably a dream come true to put on that Knicks uniform and, and suit up and call Madison Square Garden your your home arena. So, um, uh, I'll I'll start with Transformer here. Transformer, what are your thoughts about this move? What do you think it can do uh, for the Knicks in terms of? making the next step. Uh, they were one game away from the Eastern Conference Finals last year, and, uh, you know, injuries got them. Obviously, Coach Tibbs' rotation is crazy. Uh, where are you on uh, on the Knicks? Uh, I, I would just like to, like to add, I mean, yes, the yes. Carl Anthony Towns move was was a trade move. But don't forget mm-hmm. they got Mikael Bridges. Like, that was another key piece in what they did before the, the Carl Anthony Towns trade. So I think when you look at both, in retrospect of what they needed um, in that Eastern Conference. One, you're trying to be able to guard the one and two punch of the the, the Denver Broncos. The Boston Celtics, man, football is right now is on my brain a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but, but and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. So you definitely want to, you know, beef up your defense as far as from a wing standpoint. But now that you're adding Carl Anthony Towns, I think you're adding a piece that you were missing when you guys didn't have Julius Randle in, in that entire playoff run, right? You need mm-hmm. somewhat of a seven-footer to kind of be there, not necessarily be the interior enforcer or the interior defender, but to be there in the post to kind of take some of that pressure off of uh, 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 Jalen Brunson. So Jalen Brunson really last year had to put a lot on his shoulders, and we saw a miraculous showing from him yeah. um, doing so. And then with the helps of Josh Hart um, and those guys that were right alongside him kind of helped streamline that. But you also got to think, you guys, they lost uh, – they're going to be without uh, Michelle Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, I believe, yeah. is the name yeah. of the center. Mm-hmm. So you, you're kind of you're going to need that that another that other seven-footer to kind of be there. He drafted there. a young kid, though, that's um, – that uh, looks like he's got a ton of uh, upside, so – yeah, I mean, but you know, you're not expecting rookies to come in and you know ex- expect that championship caliber kind of kind of maybe not them. offensively, but what if if they can provide some toughness, some rebounding, and some defense, rookies can yeah. do that. Yeah, they they can, but how often do we see it in today's NBA? Mm-hmm. Well, you playing for Coach Tibbs, you better or you're not going to play, right? Well, you bet you bet you better you better be ready to play 48 minutes at any given day. Oh, last year, keep in mind that one of their bigs was a rookie. You know what I mean? So. You can bring a rookie along throughout the process as the season goes on who gets those reps and he gets more confidence. And as yeah. long as they're playing a role, you don't expect a rookie to come in and be the driving force for any team. When Benyama, for instance, right? You yeah. could be good, be great, but you don't expect a rookie to come in and have that huge of a splash that's going to meet or, or make the difference between the team winning and losing. But contributing, that's a different story. Yeah, no, but I, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Um, but like, But like I was saying, I mean, you add them them two pieces. I think you're like I said, you're beefing up to beat Boston, right? Boston is the top dog right now. You're the champion. You're the leaders of the East. 
right now the attention is on you. We have to dethrone you. So what do you go? You go get you a Christoph Porzingis opposite, call Anthony Towns, right? You go get you somebody that can go guard Jalen Brown to slow him down, Mikael Bridges, right? You already have mm-hmm. firepower of Jalen Brunson. You got the, the toughness of Josh Hart and those guys. Uh, OG Andenobi, you know, can also guard Jason Tatum. So you're piecing everything together because you literally just saw Boston no matter how they did it, they they got to the championship and they won the big they won the big thing. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of replicating that. I do like what they were doing. I was a fan of a fan of Julius Randle a while before. Um, you know, while he was a Laker, you kind of saw that dog in him. But it's like, you know, when when the rubber meets the road in the playoffs, you know, Julius Randle kind of fades away. Yeah. Um, in, yeah. in my, in my opinion, guy. not the same guy. We literally just saw them damn near make a a, a championship run without him. So I think at mm-hmm. that point they're like, okay. I said it before the season started or before the offseason started. That man's expendable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you, you're looking at Julius Randle like, bro, you're expendable, especially when they got Mikhail Bridges. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's definitely expendable. He's on the block. They're just waiting on the right piece. But anyway, that's that's pretty much what I got for him. I think they're going to be a, a, a top three opponent as well. I have them, Philly, and uh, and the Knicks. They're, they're literally going to be gunning back and forth. Maybe Milwaukee is like a close third or fourth in that rotation. Fourth. But, you know, that's my uh, top four right now. Yep. Got you, got you. Um, real yep. quick, we don't we don't have G in here tonight, but we got our other resident dummy, Baltimore, and apparently he's filling in for G because the Jason Tatum slander has already begun, man. Who that's Steve? Nah, this is um, Bruce. Oh, okay, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on, man, come on. I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand this lack of respect for Tatum, but it's whatever, man. Yeah. Tay bum, Tay bum. Excuse me, Tay bum. Well, I, well, I'll say I'll say to 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 Bruce even right to to Bruce in the chat that I agree. I'm 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 very high on Brandon Ingram as a player. I, I love Brand, Brandon Ingram as a player. And I think that he doesn't get enough credit. I do think that he and JT are actually closely matched in terms of skill set, et cetera. But I wouldn't necessarily expect Brandon Ingram to be a number one option on any team. So nah. Jason Tatum is show or actually showed us, I'll say, through last season. Or, or through the playoffs then, and even ramping up for the playoffs, that maybe he's not that guy who's going to actually lead the team to the promised land by himself. But the yeah. good news is they have a very good group of players around him, so he doesn't necessarily have to. You know what I mean? So We really got to – we got to stop expecting guys to be like Mike's and Kobe's, man. That's that's why those guys were so special, man. The 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 top of the top, the Magics, the Kobe's, the Isaiah's, the Birds, and then on top the of Jimmy that, Butler, Michael yeah. Jordan's. Like, we got to stop. Butler. We got to stop expecting oh, guys to be that, plain and simple. And just because Tatum is not that, we got to stop taking away from how good that guy is because he's not that. Yeah, that that's all I'm saying, man. The disrespect is absurd. Oh, yeah. my God, I mean, Bruce. How many a, times have I said it, Bruce? The reason part uh, – okay, correction. Part of the reason, right, is that, one, um, if – if because because G's argument was that uh, – what's his name? Derek White was taking his minutes, which is not exactly the case, but fine. Even still, you will have a guy like Derek White who's on the floor, can do all the dirty work, but doesn't need the shots, right? So I talked to somebody who's in the know and who knows extremely well And I'll just say, I talked to somebody who spoke specifically to Coach Steve Kerr about this. And a big part of why Tatum didn't get the minutes is because he's not a better or more efficient scorer than LeBron or Kevin Durant. So he wasn't going to get the minutes over those guys at the three. So it's it was just it was just a lineup situation. I mean, that's all it was. We need to stop taking this as, oh, he didn't play him because he sucks. Like, cut that out, man. That's real infantile and nonsensical and and it just lacks basketball knowledge but it's all good no and i i but before you go on that i'll uh, i'll add a little piece of that mm-hmm. lebron james is the focal point of that olympic team offense right jason tatum he always has doesn't fit in lebron james's offense nope. why you think brandon nope. ingram was a trade piece in la Yep, because he needs the ball. So, and like you he know, can't be a thank three. Thank you for admitting that, transformer. No, no, I'll, I'll admit it. I'll, I'll, I'll admit it. I told you, man. I'm a, you got to <laughs> wait till the season starts for me to be objective. You want to catch more objectivity about LeBron James, okay? <laughs> but um, but no, um, LeBron James, like he he dominates the ball. He's the con- he's the control yes. of the offense. He has a PS5 controller, right? Mm-hmm. He's controlling everything, right? Right. If you look at how Jason Tatum plays, he kind of needs the ball. 
So a lot of that, he's he's not a you know play off the ball type of player. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the kind of you know he still does like dirty work things, plays yeah. defense, goal gets mm-hmm. rebounds. Will assist will assist the rock, but you can't assist the rock if LeBron James is dominating. Then you got Steph Curry in the game at the same time. So it, it really just didn't work for Tatum to be in that lineup. Period. Um, and then you know it, you kind of saw it weighing on him because he's like, okay, well I'm not getting any minutes. I'm not in the starting lineup. Then when he got in the lineup, he couldn't do anything because he's like. You know, A.E. got in the ball game and A.E. took over the ball game while Jason Tatum was in it. So it's kind of like that's the only knock I give Jason Tatum for the Olympics is that he didn't maximize his opportunities when he got in the game. And he let A.E. kind of take his shine away. Like, bro, you're the champion. Go get the ball. A.E. is literally calling for the ball out of bounds. Like, yo, give me the ball. And Jason Tatum kind of just like, eh, whatever. And, right. you know, played his game. But that's the piece I'll add. You know, it was just it's, it was LeBron's type of offense. And Jason Tatum just didn't fit in that offense. Exactly. That that I mean, I I don't think it takes some sort of basketball genius to know that. And like I said, what I said about why Tatum didn't play, I got that from a very well placed source who actually spoke to Steve Kerr and was told that. So anybody else has their opinions, that's cool. But Steve Kerr told my source that. So I'll leave it there. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll I, I'll say that. I mean, that, that I think that that was very obvious. Like you said, you don't have to be a savant. You know what I mean to realize. Yeah especially if you've watched Jason Tatum play enough to understand that he needs the ball in certain offensive sets uh, and he's into a rhythm. And when you don't, when you don't have the time to get him into a rhythm of his shots Mm -hmm. and he doesn't come right out the gate, because sometimes you see him, he'll come right out the gate, man, and he's ready. He's on fire. Mm -hmm. Another time it takes him a while. He may go a quarter or two, maybe the first half where he's not even in rhythm at all. We saw in the finals. You know what, that, that starting five docu-series, you know what I mean? Kind of indicated as much that he allows a lot of his off the court family stuff. And you know what I mean? Making sure his son and his mom are present before it gives him this confidence to sort of sometimes go out and get it done. And if he's worried about other things, it, it seeps into his on the court game. And um, mm. yeah, the Olympics yeah. was just not space for him to get ramped up. You got to come in there already ready. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, true. and but I've had to have offensive sets run for him to get him in the game. And it, that just wasn't the space for it. So I agree 100%. No. What Transformer was saying, I'm in agreement with you as far as uh, the Eastern Conference goes, the top four being, you know, these these Knicks are, man, these Knicks are dangerous. I have been finishing at two and challenging Boston, you know, potentially for one. I like the moves that they made. I like the the acquisition of uh, Carl Anthony Towns. I don't like that they lost even Chenzo. I don't yeah. like that they lost Hartenstein. But I, li- I do like that they got a chance to, as Bruce said, figure out where Jalen's um, strength is and where he can better dominate and, and get his thing off while still facilitating. And so to bring in a cat when knowing that, you know what I mean? It won't take away from how uh, Jalen needs the ball and how he needs to operate was clutch for, for the Knicks, man. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that Mikael Bridges signing, <coughs> my Lord, bro. Like that, that gives them more of a scoring punch as well from the guard position. Like I said, DiVincenzo is amazing as a basketball player. Hard's gritty. He's going to still do his thing. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think that they lost too much by replacing now DiVincenzo with Mikel Bridges. You bring in a certified bucket who can go out and get it, you know what I mean, whenever, at every level. Uh, so, yeah, the Knicks, man, I'm, I'm high on the Knicks for, for this year. If, like you said, if Mitchell Robinson comes back, and he's able to offer his presence, his 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 um his 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 rim protection mm. and rebounding. Then that that even takes away from some of the softness of Carl Anthony Towns. And I, when I say softness, I mean Carl likes to yeah, operate inside that perimeter as well, and doesn't necessarily like to bang down there with the bigs and stay in that space where he is probably best suited to play the game, which is okay. It seems like the Knicks are accepting of what Carl Anthony Towns is as a player, and they understand, hopefully, Tibbs. I'm sure, certain that Tibbs will figure out how to make that work inside that New York offense, man. But, I'm, yeah, I'm high on the Knicks as well, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Quick note before we move on from the Knicks. Uh, I will never forgive Mitchell Robinson for this. A couple of years ago, uh, might have been during his rookie season or right after that, I guess he had a really good game, and somebody told him that, that night he reminded them of um Hakeem Olajuwon and he was like I don't know who that is first of all who would say that second of all his mama for you to be a- 
facts. But for you, his to be mama, a quote, NBA big, and say uh -huh. you don't know who Dream is, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what to say, man. He said he didn't even know who Dream was. He said he said he didn't know who he was. Wow. Yeah. So that's I'll I'll, I'll never problem. forget that. That's a huge problem. That's that's that's, that's an topic, right? As um offline, Bruce was going in on on, on, on AE, right? on Ant Man. Yeah. And just ignorance of the younger class of players who are coming in to not know the history, bro, and the recent history of who was in this league dominating before you got here is asinine, bro. It is disrespectful. I think that the NBA needs to put together a better program for educating these kids, man, who came before them, a whole film study session, examination, something, bro. Like, there's no way you can not know who Hakeem Olajuwon is. It's just impossible. Like, how can you not know as a big? How can you not know, bro? That's weird. You know what I mean? It just sounds crazy, bro. It sounds Very crazy. crazy. This dude Very didn't play crazy. 70 years ago. He played literally, man, like 20. Like 20 years ago, yeah. Hey, like y'all, you you were well, he wasn't alive. I wouldn't say he was alive yet, but still, like that that's relevant information to know, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Literally, one of the key pieces on why Kobe learned his footwork from he coached he quotes Dream. Mm -hmm. So even if you know if you're a Kobe fan or if you know who Kobe is, you should know where he got his footwork from. Right? He got a lot yeah. of his footwork from, coach, I mean, uh, training with Dream. Yeah, and I, and Dream, I, and I would say I not even your Dream. Yeah. <laughs> not, Put it just on Kobe. Hakeem has very been helping a lot of folks with their footwork. LeBron is is, is noted for having trained with him a few seasons back. You know what I mean, or earlier in his career. So a lot of play young players in the league are still working out with him right now. Yeah, so young boy, not to know who he is, man. It's kind of crazy. It, it's, it's wild. It's like wow, yeah. bro. That's that, that, that's crazy. That's crazy. No doubt. Yeah, but 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 from there, um, you know, the Philadelphia 76ers moving on to them. Mm -hmm. I I like the moves that they made i am very very high on tyrese maxi i think that this kid man is, is just man an absolute beast at this game he is he is coming along you know very well in his development as a young superstar budding superstar in his league but what i do not feel most confident about which is already rearing its head with the even bringing in pg mm -hmm. is that to stay healthy, but I thought it was a good mm -hmm. move to bring in Paul George mm -hmm. because you know that Embiid is not going to be able to give you a hundred percent throughout the season, and neither is Paul George. But I thought that they could kind of offset each other, you know, each other's missed time off the court, and um, like like Paul did in 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 LA. But what would happen? I, I I assume was that they would get healthy at the right time, hopefully, and then that will make all the difference. I think that because of the deficiency between health wise um Embiid and also Paul George that this will be a breakout season or a breakout season for Tyrese Maxey I think Tyrese Maxey is going to lead the league in scoring this year he's just absolutely going to have to at this point with now the announcement that Embiid won't be playing back-to-backs um you know won't be available to play in back-to-backs and now with Paul George being iffy already with the knee injury man Tyrese is going to have to step up and be who he actually is you know what I mean just yeah. on so I still like I, round three. I like I like your um idea of Maxi leading the league in scoring. I just don't know if he's going to be able to have enough time where he's the main guy to get all those shots. Uh, Big Dog Talk Sports, what's good, man? Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate you. Make sure you uh, hit that like and subscribe. And everybody in here, if you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe. All right, um, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had some uh, interaction with Big Dogs today, man. I checked out a couple of his. His videos. If y'all haven't tapped in with Big Dog either, man, make sure that you do. Yeah, good, good, good content. No doubt, no doubt. Definitely gonna have to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I think I like the addition of Paul George a lot. And even though um he's one of those guys that seems to uh be cursed by the injury bug as well, and a lot of people think he can't be the guy. But what I point to is two years ago, uh Kawhi Leonard, as usual, was down in the playoffs, and for the first time ever. The Clippers got to the conference finals and how they get there off the back of Paul George. Paul George carried them before yeah. he ran out of gas. And that dude is really, really good. Like you just saw in the B-roll that we showed, Paul George is he's a very skilled player. He's a point forward type and uh, maybe not like he used to, but he can also be a quality wing defender at times. So he's a really good matchup for Tatum. And he's also going to make Tatum defend as well um, or or Jalen Brown, you know, however you want to however you want to do that matchup. I think. 
I think it's pretty good. It's a good move if you can have even relatively good health for the 76ers this season, yeah. that that could be another team. Again, you see these teams making very specific moves in the East to try and load up and dethrone Boston. And I think that was a good move. I do. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all because of Paul George's age and injury history, and he may not even play in the uh, opener because he's already uh, hyper-extended in knee. But if you can get – what do I want to say? 60 or 65 games out of Paul George this year, Philly can be a dangerous team. Embiid already said he's not playing back-to-backs, which I don't even want to get into that. Is I'll just say that's another topic. Disappointing. Yeah, it's extremely <laughs> disappointing, and I'm a big Embiid fan, and it's just it's just sad to uh, to see that the season hasn't even started, and he he's already putting it out there that he's not doing it. Like like what happened? At what point? When did we lose conditioning your body to go through the grind? But but again, that's another topic. But I think that Philly has what it takes. Um, they have a championship head coach. They have really good players. I think Embiid is also probably pretty tired of hearing the talk about how he's the only uh, MVP that's never been to the conference finals in NBA history. Um, so I'm sure that he wants to kind of uh, shed that label. And so the biggest enemy to the Sixers is health. And if they can stay even moderately, relatively healthy, they can be dangerous as well. Right, right. The yeah, East at the top is tough. Go ahead, Transformer. Yeah. No, um, I, I like what both of you guys said. The biggest thing is health, right? You got to be – I don't want to piss myself off here because what, what, uh, what Joel Embiid said, right, and literally his coach backing him – I mean, staff was backing him up on it, not wanting to play back-to-backs because you're worried about your health, bro. You're always worried about your health. Back to backs right. ain't gonna affect that at all, right? You know what I mean? Proper conditioning, proper staying in shape. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to miss the entirety of the back to backs. You're not LeBron James and you're 40 years old. LeBron was just saying, okay, bro, you're 40. I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have some sort of understanding about it. Bro, you're just you just came off of an MVP season. You're the best big in the NBA. I I, I don't think that there's nobody else better than Joel Embiid when he's on that floor. He's the best big in the NBA, right? Correct. And for Easily. you to just go, like for you to go out here and say uh, and and lose the weight that you did, like you've been, pra- I mean, preaching all off season. Yeah, he lost. I, b- I believe it was thirty pounds or twenty pounds or something, something, um, something key to you know make sure he was more relatively healthy throughout the season. To now add that you don't want to play back to backs because of your health, I think that's asinine, bro. You lost yep. the weight so you can be more durable, be able to have that stamina um, to be able to take those back-to-backs. So take that shit head on. I'm not paying you $51 million for you to tell me when you going to want to play, mm-hmm. right? If you're, if, you're, if you're not hurt, if you're healthy, you're playing in the game. And I, I think that's what coaches and owners need to really own that. Like, no, bro, you're healthy. Are you hurt? Okay, you're playing. You plan. You're playing. Right. These fans, th- the reason why you're making this money, right, is because of viewership and fandom. Mm-hmm. So you're going to give the fans and the viewers what they want. We're paying you $51 million for you to play as many games as possible, granted, if you're healthy or not. So play the game. But anyway, I digress. Philadelphia 76ers, I think they're a great team. I think what they did with Paul George was the upgrade they needed because the last guy that was in that spot, boy, you could not find him if you if you, if you you had big uh, uh, bifocals mm. on, uh, binoculars on, telescope, microscope. Boy, you couldn't find him. And I mean that in Tobias Harris. You couldn't find that man. That boy was literally taking money and robbing Peter to pay nobody. Because, <laughs> like, when it mattered the most, uh, uh, Tobias Harris was a no-show every single time. So I think with that, you got a definite upgrade in Paul George. Um, you know, granted, he has his moments to where uh, in the past that he, you know, he, you know, kind of stuck up the bed a little bit. But I think in the last couple of years, he's kind of really put the game, uh, put the Clippers on his back, um, especially with you no know, uh, Kawhi Leonard being there. Like Bruce said earlier, he made that strong run, you know, when Kawhi was out. So I think, you know, you have a guy like that who can go and drop 30 on any given night um, on, a, on a night that Joel Embiid is probably within foul trouble. And you got Tyrese Maxey uh, right alongside him who can go give you 30 at any night. You got Kelly Oubre who can go and give you 15, 20. You got Caleb Martin who can be a spark. I mean, you you guys are really, really um, increasing that firepower 
to to you know really be a threat in the Eastern Conference. And honestly, they were one of my threats in the Eastern Conference um, before you know uh, Joel and B was dealing with injury and you know going back and forth. So uh, what you guys said to a T, man, health is really going to determine how far they go. And you starting off already in trouble with, you know, Paul George's situation, but you got, you got Tyrese Maxey, you know, you got Joel Embiid, you got Kelly Oubre, you got Keller Martin, you got Kyle Lowry, even though from what, what else he has left, but he's still a, you know, valuable uh, point guard in the right retrospect. But I think you're going to be all right. Right. You know, um, I got him. I think I had him on my chart. I think I had him finishing third. Um, I think I had Knicks two, uh, Philly three, Milwaukee four. Um, you know, interchangeable, but like, like you said, it's all predicated off health. But you guys were pretty much on board, man. Cool, yep. cool. Um, let's go to I guess, I guess the other team that most people think will be um in the top four, and that's Milwaukee. And then after that, we can kind of uh, we'll just go from there. We're, we're not gonna run through all eight, but Milwaukee, I think, is the fourth. It's called the and, beast of the East, not all the everybody in the exactly, East. Exactly, exactly. Right. <laughs> <And they can, laughs> right, right. Realistically, that's a team that I think can land anywhere from first to fourth, depending on injuries, right? Correct. We know that Correct. Giannis is a champion. We know that he has the thirst to become a champion again. I'm not sure how hungry Dame Lillard really is to be a champion because he refuses to even attempt to defend. So it's like all he wants to do is shoot, but he also kind of has to be the guy so it's, it's a very weird situation and again i've said this before if i was doc rivers what i would have done i would have gone to the film department and had him splice together a video of every variation of the pick and roll that stockton and malone ran and say hey you, you guys learn these and everyone you're capable of running we're going to run it this year now the pick and pops that's not Giannis's game we know that malone later in his career became a deadly mid-range shooter but that's not Giannis's. uh that's not Giannis's thing but Regardless, I'm sure there's a lot of variations of the pick and roll that they could run together. And I don't see why that couldn't be successful. But, you know, that's just me. But that's what I would be doing if I was Doc. But I think because think about when Giannis is healthy, that guy almost by himself is good enough to get you 50 wins. Um, is Middleton still there? Yeah. OK, there you go. I, I thought so. I, so, um, yeah. So Middleton is still there. He's a quality number three guy. And we even saw him go off. When both Giannis and uh, Dame Lillard were hurt in the playoffs, so Middleton can get you buckets. He's another guy deadly in the mid range and can shoot the three. Really good, you know, traditional bucket getting small forward. That's that's a good basketball team. Now here's the problem: Doc Rivers coached my Celtics to a championship, and with all that said, I have no faith in that guy as a head coach. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy the guy as a coach has blown more three to one leads than any coach in NBA history. Like I have no faith. So that's a bad yeah. stat. That's a terrible stat. So that's the other concern. But as it stands, that's a good enough team if they're healthy to give anybody a run. Um, I think we started with Transformer last time. Q, go ahead, man. What you got on that? Yeah, I would say you're on to something. You know, I, I, I love everything that you said, bro. The um, You're on to something with that, with that Stockton Malone footage. Because I think that even in a dribble handoff situation, Dane will be incredibly effective shooting that, 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 that mid-range jump shot. I know he's not known – for being a, an assassin in the mid range, but he has he has a, a a a good enough shot, man, to be that guy if he accepted that as a role and as a, as a functional part of his game, like a kind of a dominant part of his game. The the long range bombs are going to come. You know what I mean. The other thing is Middleton. Middleton is I think going to be key for this team um, yeah. on court, right on court, because Middleton just he suffered from a lot of injuries these last couple seasons. So yeah. I think. Middleton is going to be really the linchpin for them. You know what I mean? He, he's going to be that, it, it, like, they go by how Chris Middleton can actually be effective for them in the lineup this year because he's not hampered with, with, with nagging injuries. You know what I mean? Or where he's missing a significant amount of time yeah. that allows them to actually run a functional offense because even in order for that pick and roll to work effectively, you need other threats out there on the court. So you need a Middleton that can stretch the offense that can put the ball on the floor, you know what I mean, and score at a different level as well. So he's dangerous enough to allow for a more fluid offense from Milwaukee. My biggest concern, likewise, Bruce, is Doc Rivers. I don't understand, and I want to be careful because I was when I look down because I hear you dragging Doc behind <laughs> the pickup truck. I'm like, we might want to be careful not to be 
oh, y'all hating on a black man with a job. and You know what I mean? Y'all talk. But I'm saying, bro, I don't understand how <laughs> uh, so high on everybody's coaching list. I'm like, I can't figure it out either. Oh, bro, it's so weird to me because mm -hmm. I not I don't like Doc Rivers as a coach. It ain't up to me to like him as a coach. I'm just a fan of the game, right? But I don't see him being this coach that coaches his personnel effectively. I don't even see him as that guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, mm. I don't. I, I hope that he can put together an offense that really works for the Milwaukee personnel that highlights you know, what Giannis actually needs to thrive at the top of his game. Giannis is the only player, I will say he's the only player in the NBA, and this is debatable, this is just my opinion, but he's the only NBA player that I've seen in recent years who it seems like every year he adds a little bit of something extra to his bag, and it's like, man, he got that now? Like, man, Giannis is a beast. So I, I, I don't doubt what he's going to do on the court, but he still needs a complementary offense that helps him play more effectively with, his per, his teammates because otherwise like you said bruce he gets you 50 wins but when you can review footage from these 50 wins and then you get into the playoffs but what Giannis has been most effective at doing is no longer effective that's why mm -hmm. they were walls against him and stuff like that mm -hmm. playoff se uh, series pass so i think that hopefully doc man comes out with a, with a with a bona fide game plan i i'm still salty and again i'm not a milwaukee bucks fan i'm just a basketball fan mm -hmm. Day, but I'm still salty about Adrian Griffin being fired when they were the number one team in the East. I'm like, well, how do you fire? Yeah. Oh, they got you. They like, well, because they that was weird. So you know, can I? I um, uh, I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you for a minute. So mm -hmm. I'm with you on the Adrian Griffin firing. I think that was terrible, and I've got to be um consistent here. Consistency is a big thing with me. Anybody who knows me knows that, and so I'm always blaming LeBron for getting coaches fired, as I understand. Giannis is the reason Adrian Griffin was gone. He got that coach fired. And that, to me, that wasn't cool. I don't like that. It's like one thing I loved about Giannis was he always seemed like a, I'm so happy and I'm so blessed to be here, to be in this position. All I'm going to do is work hard and try to win. And it almost seems like, <sighs> I'm going to use this term, somebody may be offended, apologies if that's the case, but he almost seems um, like he's become very Americanized. You understand where I'm going with that? Like diva-ish, unappreciative. Um, and so now it's it's a lot less of the I'm happy to be here. I'm thankful to be here. And now it's a lot more uh, flexing power in the organization. Go get me this guy. Go get me that guy. And let's focus on let's just do what it takes to win and let me be the best player I can be and more on all the ancillary things. And, and I do not like that at all. Um, that's what I see. And like I said, um, as, as far as I know, he was the reason Adrian Griffin got fired. And I, I don't think that's cool because, again, it's not like they were struggling out of the box. It's they were the best team in, in best the same East. Yeah. At the East in, in the East. Excuse me. And, you know, he you know, he got the guy canned. I guess he didn't like maybe what what he was calling, because I believe I was hearing Adrian Griffin would call stuff and Giannis would just ignore him and do what he wanted to do. And that is not cool. Um, Brandon, don't ever repeat stuff like that from people who are clearly developmentally disabled. I wanted to use the R word, but I'm not going to use it. So don't repeat stuff like that, B. Um, yeah. So, uh, that, that is, um, yeah, that, that, that's what I got on the, the Adrian Griffin firing. I think that's terrible. And Q, I totally agree with you about the Doc Rivers and that's coming from a Celtics fan. So, Hey, thank you, Doc, for coaching us to that chip. In 2000, what was that? 16, 2008? Was that 16 years ago? Yeah. Like, yeah. what What other coach got that much run out of one championship a decade and a half ago? Like, this is crazy. Crazy. Transformer, go ahead, man. Oh, me. man. Uh, I got nothing to add to what you guys said. Um, I think a lot of this is predicated off of Middleton's health. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, everybody in the starting lineup played 73 plus games except Middleton. Right. So I think that's a big key on you guys, uh, you know, being a threat. Last year, we didn't see much of Milwaukee, mainly because the key cog in the offense, Giannis was hurt. So I think when you have when you lose Giannis, you lose the entire team. Yeah, I, I don't think there's nothing left in Milwaukee when you take Giannis mm -hmm. out of that lineup for them to even be a threat at all. So I'm not going to, you know, dismount, discount them 
being a better contender higher than four. Like I said, mm-hmm. they can finish one through four for all we know because uh, uh, Giannis, a healthy Dame Lillard, a healthy Chris Middleton, Bobby Portis, uh, 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 they got t- uh, t- Tyron Prince. You know, they they have pieces behind them mm-hmm. to actually be be a uh, uh, be a threat in that in that uh, Eastern Conference, especially when you got nobody that can really guard Giannis. Right, Damian Lillard can go for forty out of nowhere because mm-hmm. he's you know extremely hot from three. Chris Middleton can knock five, six threes in in a game, and then the fourth quarter, you know, become that closer. Him and Damian Lillard can literally close the game out um, in great fashion. So, I, I, I agree with you guys saying I really ain't got much to add, honestly, when it comes to Milwaukee. Right. Yeah. yeah, I, I just want to I want to highlight that comment that just popped up on the screen. Yeah, yeah, they, the Clippers weren't in a good space and they weren't in the mix because of Doc, and I think no. that in a lot. With the personnel that that um that they had when he was when he was in LA, they should have been much what? better. Almost how I feel about what? this Milwaukee team is that Doc has a lot of he's has a great personnel, bro. And if he doesn't show us something this year, then the Adrian Griffin firing, even though Bruce, like you said, maybe that was because of Giannis, but that it, I mean that firing will be for naught. You know what I mean? Because who do they bring in? That that can control a group this talented, if not for Doc Rivers being in the position that he's in right now. So they're going to go as far as Doc Rivers and his offense. You know what I mean? Can take them. I know that when a coach loses the locker room, that's a big deal. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? But you know what I mean? I'm I'm like, how how did he lose the locker room when they were number one? That's tough. Like I'm number one, and they were not lose one. the locker yeah. room. That's they it's were just bad as that and Toronto he, coach that lost his job when he was coach of the year. <laughs> he fired me and I just got coach of the year. Oh, Dwayne Casey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dwayne Casey. So it's like, damn, mm-hmm. what am I doing wrong? Yeah, yeah. that's tough. But no, man, um, yeah, he make, he makes a good point. But uh you, uh, you talking about the you talking about the king of LA, the Clippers? The king, the king, <laughs> the new kings of LA. They made all that noise, talking about some it's my it's our turn, and them motherfuckers didn't even make it to the finals. <laughs> And LA got another championship on y'all watch. It's Kawhi, bro. It's Kawhi, bro. It's Kawhi. Man, sometimes Kawhi. we keep shit in the basement because we we gotta, you know, keep the filth down there. But sometimes the filth can get out of the that's basement. No, nah, that's where it belongs. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, that's so, where it belongs. Right I'm where so it belongs. glad they got their own building, bro. <laughs> get out of my building, bro. Get out of my building. What's the matter with you, man? Oh man, because I I love it, man. I, but, as a Laker fan, right, mm-hmm. when when Kawhi Leonard made the announcement that he's going to the Clippers and then out of, mm-hmm. out of nowhere, boom, Paul George is going to the Clippers. Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, those guys were in, I believe, Vegas at the time, and they literally went live on social media. Like, yeah, it's our turn. New Kings of L.A. You saw the, new, you saw the billboards, the posters, New Kings of L.A., Clippers. This is Kawhi Town. Remember Skip Bayless used to talk about it? it's Kawhi Town. Right, all of that noise, and them boys didn't do nada. <laughs> they didn't do nada. Didn't even make it. Like, bro, you didn't even make it to the dance. You didn't even make it to the conference. <laughs> what do you? What, what town you on? And then LA got another championship on your watch. Come on, I man. Mean, we, you, you can't hold that till we start talking about the West. My bad. Oh, oh my bad. Man, you, Lakers, my bad. My bad. Lakers. My bad. My bad. You know that Laker bias is coming in there at some point. Yeah, that's oh, exactly well, you what that is. Um, real, quick before we, <laughs> real quick before we move on to the West, um, <laughs> talking about Milwaukee, uh, let me read something to you guys. Um, excuse me. Giannis Attentacumpo recently made some comments that have sparked speculation about a potential trade. During an interview with The Athletic, Giannis joked about being traded if the Milwaukee Bucks didn't win a championship this season. While he acknowledged the pressure and high expectations, he also mentioned that it's a possibility if things didn't go well. However, it's important to notice these comments were made in a light-hearted manner, and it's unlikely that the Bucks would trade him without his consent. Giannis is a cornerstone of the franchise, and it has a significant impact both on and off the court. Do you think the Bucks have what it takes to win a championship this season? I don't, but Giannis wasn't joking. He was serious because it, it was reported, again, NBA insiders, it was reported that before the Dame Lillard thing, he was really putting pressure on the organization, like, hey, um, figure something out so that, you know, we can be more competitive for another championship or, you know, I'm going to 
Well, yeah. yeah. So, so to your question, Bruce, and to the question at the end of that article, again, I think that any any of these top four teams for the East that we mentioned, you know, if health is a is, is a factor, obviously health being mm -hmm. a factor for every team in in, in the NBA. Mm -hmm. But I think that I think that Milwaukee could quite possibly return to championship glory. But again, that hinges upon Doc Rivers and what kind of an offense he brings in with that personnel. And of Giannis making those statements about, you know what I mean, putting the team on notice. That's mm -hmm. what any superstar should be doing to say, hey, man, look, y'all got me. I'm here. But I need mm -hmm. to see some things, you know what I mean, some things changing. So that's what I've, I've long used in defense of, you know, LeBron. It's like, well, you know, what can, what can you expect when you're hanging around, hanging around, hanging around and waiting for the team to show you something? So I'm glad that in good faith, Milwaukee did pull the strings to get Dame Lillard there. But like I said, now the issue can't be that we don't have a coach that can coach us properly to get us to gel together even that we might be competitive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it remains to be seen. No doubt, no doubt. All right. Let's that's my oh, side. Back in the truck up. Okay. Yes. I was oh, like, okay. Is that? I'm like, is that the book's okay. truck? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I they wish come pay, they come to pay the podcast, man. Listen, Ooh. everybody get a cut. We good. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and uh, switch it up. We went, we're going from B to the East out to the other side of the country. You know, the side of the country that matters less. Now let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> Let's go to our next segment. Best yeah. to the West. And so obviously um, we are going to talk about the Western conference and who we see as maybe the, top four teams out there it doesn't necessarily have to be in order but you know who are the best teams out there and who are the key the key players and so on and so forth q yeah so i would say much like i opened you know what i mean the the, the show and talking about the east mm -hmm. the Classic western conference once again you know we're the surprise number one c oklahoma city thunder from last season you know what i mean same thing i think they return you know the uh, with a roster that they are familiar with, with in addition to bringing in Hardenstein, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In addition mm -hmm. to um, getting rid of Giddy and the, the the outside, you know what I mean, nonsense with playing with the kiddies. Um, and so they bring in, so they bring in um, uh, you know, um, your guy, Transformer. Um, I can't think of his name right now for, for whatever reason, but he came over from Chicago. He was, he was with the Lakers at first. Um, Lonzo Ball. Ball. Huh? No, not Lonzo Ball. Uh, I know exactly who he's talking about. Caruso. Caruso. Oh, oh, for the uh, for the no, Caruso, Thunder. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Caruso, man, the the, the Caruso. You know what I mean? Yes, so I, I like the Caruso for his great That's a good move. Toughness. That was a that was a huge signing. Um, mm -hmm. They have Jalen Williams. I love. I think that Chet Chet Holmgren, and obviously they need Chet Holmgren to to take a a, a bit of a step up this year in terms of yeah. his production. I know he's still young. Last year was just his official rookie season. But I think Chet's upside is so, so high that this is that season that we see him really kind of put it all together, even in his his, his, his frail frame. Um, but but I, I just love their team and what they, they have. They have a lot of other young pieces, so they don't actually miss a step when they have to go to their bench. Their bench is very deep. Shea Gilgis Alexander, is, he's, he's just one of them ones. You know what I mean? So I think that Shea has a great year this season as well. And mm -hmm. they they remain the class of the Western Conference in that regard. Now, when I say class of Western Conference, I know there's some, maybe some folks in the chat are probably thinking the same thing or, or probably saying it out loud. Like, man, them, them boys barely won the number one seed last year. You know what I mean? There was so much parity in the West that mm -hmm. they, they took the, the West by one game or something like that. So I'm saying yeah. when I say in terms of the class of the West, I mean, just playing with, with, with the same uh, level of intensity and the same level of intentionality that they played with last season. I think that the, what they sniffed uh, in terms of uh, greatness last season is going to carry over into this season. So I expect those boys to come out, man, and play very well. I can agree with you on that, Q. Um, but I guess the question is, they can play very well. Do they have what it takes to get to the conference finals or maybe an NBA finals. I think at the end of the day, that's the problem, right? We know that an 82 game regular season and realistically it's, it's the same in every sport, right? <sighs> We've gotten to a point now. It's like the regular season is almost like, oh, all right, can we get through it? Get to the playoffs, especially in a sport like basketball right now, obviously um, 
when you have more scarcity of games like in college football or or the NFL, it's a uh, it's a it's a different factor. But um, in basketball, these th those 82 games are long, man. That's a long slog of a season. So, yeah, they can do well and be the number one seed. I just don't have a lot of confidence that they are ready yet to be a team that can come out of the West or I'm not even sure they can make it to the conference finals. So I'll say my only pushback on that, Bruce, would be, you know, last year was their deepest run. Last year was the first year. They were actually a sleeper surprise team to me even yeah. that finished that high, right, and to play as well as they played last season. So that's why I say I know that it takes some time. Again, it takes time for these teams to really figure it all out and gel well. Yeah. To I think that, that because of what they experienced last season, that we can look forward to them kind of taking a, another step. And, and if that step is at least reaching the conference finals, dope. If that's getting to the finals and then possibly losing, well, we know that that happens. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. no, you know, go for the first time and win it all the time. But I think that they they have a, 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 gr a good enough team, a great enough personnel, and they're well coached. You know what I mean? So I think that they I, – I think that they could possibly, quite possibly, be one of those teams like West to compete at least for a championship. Win it at all needs to be seen once they match up in the finals, right, against whoever it is that they match up with from the East. But I think that they do have what it takes, honestly. Transformer? No, I like it. Um, I think they're going to be a big threat. Why? They're running the Twin Tower rest. They're, they're running the Twin Towers. I think that Hartenstein is going to be a great move for them when you have Hongren at the four, who's seven foot one, who can stretch the floor. You got one of the probably the best mid range shooter in Shy Gildress Alexander, who can literally take as many shots as he wants right now. Because at that point, I got two seven footers who can go get me a rebound and get us another possession. I think that's key. I think I think we, you know, a lot of that hasn't been enlightened in this um this offseason on how big of a move, in my opinion, that that was. If they mm -hmm. have a true big down there. Um, to bat to battle the Jokic's, you know, the, the ADs to kind of take that pressure off of Holmgren. Now Holmgren has a little bit more freedom to, you know, roam around, not necessarily have to be in the post, not necessarily have to be an enforcer, but giving him time to develop, get a little bit more meat on his bones to even become more of an enforcer if needed, you know, in rotational situations to where Hardenstein gets in trouble and some foul trouble. Well, guess what, Chet? He's seven foot one. He's bulking up a little bit. He can he can hold the anchor down until Harden seen his back into the get to back into the ball game. Alex Caruso, y'all know how I love him. I love Caruso, man. We we actually developed him pretty well in the uh with the Los Angeles Lakers. It was pretty sad to see that kid go. But you know, that's another stud on like he's a hustler on both offense and defense. Like you kind of need that to go along with Shy Gibbs Alexander. You got Lou Dort. You know, Dort is pretty much a, a, a basketball, a, a football player masquerading as a basketball player. That that dude is big, right? He's mm -hmm. very, very mm -hmm. tough. So I think you got a lot of transformer. Hold, 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 hold that. I, I was want to cut in real quick to say he reminds me so much of like Anthony Mason, bro. Yes, yes. From back and Bruce will know. He reminds me, bro. That 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 it's big a great body. Analogy. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I'm just just stout strong just like physically you're like bro he might be a problem i don't want him guarding me right make you know what i mean so you have you have guys like that that can make it a, a, a tough night for your uh for your front court right for your back court for your back court excuse me um for your back court so i like him man i i do like him um repeating for number one or number two i think uh denver is going to be the other team that's going to probably want to get that spot back um when when this next season starts um and yeah, no, I, I, I like, I like, I like the, uh, I like OKC right now. All right, uh, let's look at um, who would be you guys' uh, second team in the West. And again, this is not necessarily in order. We're just talking about those kind of top three or four uh, teams out there. Uh, so I think, obviously, the next one, however you want to order it, we got to think about the Nuggets, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think. The way they're presently constructed, they may end up kind of being like Giannis and the Bucks, like maybe not winning again for a while. They they struck, you know, uh, they what is it? They struck lightning. Is that is that the expression? They caught lightning in a bottle, oh, I guess. Bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the the Nuggets and Ralph oh, gotcha, gotcha, a couple gotcha. years ago. So I'm not really sure that they are equipped to win again. Now they have certain matchups they can really take advantage of. Obviously, the Lakers being Lakers. one of them. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes, man, you know, it's just about matchups and that's 
that just seems to be a tough one. Um, but yeah, I they're going to be one of the best teams in the West. Uh, Jokic is, you know, one of the best players in the league, one of the best players in the world. I will stand by it that Embiid is better than him. They do different things, but you know, <laughs> Embiid, we see him eat Jokic's lunch when they match up head to head, and that's important. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's not just the team winning. That's we're talking about an actual. You and me, mano y mano, same position, and I'm destroying you. So Cook. I, I think that, yes, <laughs> I think that means a whole lot. Barbecue chicken. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that means a lot. But at, at the end of the day, Denver, very good basketball team, will be a top four seed in the East, providing everybody's healthy. But that's another one that I'm not really sure if they have what it takes to get out of the East again. Michael Porter Jr., for whatever reason, hasn't hasn't really been – playing to his capability and showing up. And I don't, I don't know if he's that guy to be a quality number three. Um, Jamal Murray, you can't count on him either. I don't know what's going on. Jokic is as steady as they come, as steady as the day is long, I think, I think would be the expression. But he is not a guy with his play style that can particularly carry a team. So he needs, he needs guys to come along with him. And I don't know if he has that. So it's going to be tough. Um, yeah, Brandon, I think you're right. Go ahead, Q. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I wanted to read Brandon's uh, comment, and that's, okay. that's true. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and that's why I have them at number four. I'm not really, and again, much like the parity in the in the Eastern Conference, I think that there's parity also. There's parity throughout the league, so clearly on both conferences, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. And then the a the, uh, clash of all of them when they come together to face off throughout the season to sharpen each other. But I think that Denver will, you know, because they're returning similar personnel. Their only addition, real true addition, they lost KCP, but they add yeah. Westbrook. And now Westbrook is no slouch. I I, I know that yeah, he's got that break, you know what I mean, slander and a lot of – but Westbrook has been consistent at playing the way that he plays the game when he's allowed to play the way that he plays. The one thing that I like about Denver is that they are a well-coached team. Mike Malone is very good at coaching them as, as personnel. He's great at making mm -hmm. adjustments. I my respect, especially um, in last year's – playoffs with making adjustments, you know, especially after those first two games that they dropped to Minnesota, where it's like he he does have the ability to coach his team well, but much mm -hmm. to your point, Bruce, I agree. They're only going to go as far as, as Jamal Murray will allow them to go. Uh, Michael yep. Porter Jr., he's going to play a role. He's playing a role. Aaron Gordon's going to play a role. He plays a role. Christian Brown's going to come in and play a role. He plays a role. Jokic is going to be consistently playing the way that he plays. He's just a big body with a slow-mo skill set that is tough to guard. And um, he's very skilled as well, even, mm -hmm. you know, the size. So I think that he, his buckets are, are, are certified. It's going to be what Jamal Murray actually can consistently bring. And I think Jamal Murray spent it all in the Lakers series. You know what I mean? With the, and that, 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 I'm just saying that's, that's not Lakers slander, but I'm saying he spent it all in that series. Mm -hmm. And then he, black through the rest of the playoffs so they're going to need jamal murray to really step up and be that guy jamal murray's a bucket and this kid can flat out get it done offensively but it's just mm -hmm. going to be a matter of what he brings and contributes to help them get over the hump they cannot make it without a bona fide number two and he's got to be that this this season yeah yeah uh i'll tell you what happened to them boys man <laughs> dumb folks wanted to put us in our place so goddamn bad yeah because I, I was, I, I wanted to interject, but I wanted to let Bruce finish. He's like, man, what, if, well, you know, what's going on with Michael Porter Jr.? Oh, he showed up in that LA series. Oh man, you know, Jamal sure Murray is just not, not finishing game. Oh, you know, he he did against the LA, he did like the LA series, right? He did. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, I was a, uh, you know, I'm a Laker fan, right? So I got a, you yes. know, Laker group chat, and I'm literally, I'm like, yo, I'm watching the, the Denver in the next series. I'm like, yo, did they just waste all of their talent just to sweep yes. us? <laughs> just yes. to get us up out of there? Because, yeah, man, so. Michael Porter Jr. went home. Jamal Murray, mm -hmm. no show. I'm like, KCP, not getting the rock, not shooting the throw. I'm like, yo, the folks literally wasted all, expended all of their energy to beat us, and now they got whatever's left in the next next series. But anyway, but that's besides the point. Um, I, I, I like them. I still got Denver finishing top two. Uh, I think with – with Mike Malone, Mike Malone is one hell of a coach. I do like his ability to coach. Um, he's a coach's I don't like son, him. right? Huh? He's a coach's son, right? I believe his, his dad coached LeBron at one point in Cleveland. Did he? Isn't he Brendan Malone? I believe so. 
I, is that his dad? I think so. Is his dad or his brother? I think it's his dad, though. That's his dad. Yep. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yep. I didn't know that. All right. So he's I mean, coach's son. yeah. So we coach his son. So I mean, he's a he's he's one hell of a coach, right? And I think when you lose KCP, and in retrospect, I don't like Westbrook. I didn't like him at all as an addition to the Lakers. I thought as soon as we got him, I just knew it was a bad move. I wanted to call LeBron, but he stopped. He started blocking my phone calls and be like, "Yo, what the fuck." That's not it, right? So I'm like, so anyway, right. he didn't fit with us. I do like his fit coming off the bench in Denver. I do like that, right? You do need that that extra piece to come off of the bench, give you that spark. Westbrook can still give you a spark. Westbrook is still a decent player, right? He's just mm -hmm. not a starter, not a not a not a takeover caliber. You don't want this guy to lead your team type of player. Right. But if you can reduce his role to that yeah. 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes to where he's coming in, giving you a hard fought 20, 25 minutes, he can mm. really propel you in a lot of basketball games. And we're talking about the regular season here. I think yeah. that's going to be key for them in the regular season in order for them to finish up top. Jokic is going to be Jokic. Jokic mm -hmm. is still one of the best bigs in the league. Um, he's the best big in the East, the Western Conference. I still mm -hmm. have jo jo Joel Embiid in front of him. Because when them boys match up, like we say, it's night and day. MB truly cooks this dude to uh, a nice, dark, crisp barbecue chicken type of style. But, uh, but I mean, Jokic is still a problem over there. Nobody in the in the Western Conference can truly stop him. AD can't stop him. Like I think, I think that's the best big you got in the in the Western Conference that could even sort of challenge him. Challenge him. And yes, he has trouble, right? But I I do like um. Um, the fact that you know you got Jamal Murray, you got Denver, uh, you got uh, uh, Jokic, and you do got Aaron Gordon. I do like I, I do like Aaron Gordon in his in his role, um, just coming out of the block, playing off the block. I think that's a great spot for him. Um, and like I said, when yeah, the dunker spot, yeah, you, you, you're in the dunker mm -hmm. spot. So I think that's a great spot for him. I saw that work a lot for them in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think they start to use that a lot more throughout the season, man. Like I said, you know, you got Westbrook coming off of the bench. That's a nice second unit to go with them. And uh, losing KCP will hurt your shooting. It truly will. Man. But, you know, you need Michael Porter Jr. to step up at some point in time. Like, mm -hmm. he's, he's going to have to take over that 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 role and being that sharpshooter that, sh that clearly you showed when you was playing the Lakers. So right. I'm gonna need you to act like you can still shoot the damn ball when you and ain't looking at him. purple and gold, right? You beat him, <laughs> so, so you better go out there and earn it. Exactly, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's my that's my take on that. No doubt, no doubt. All right, let's yeah. move to uh, um, a team that could be anywhere from second in the West to eighth in the West, and that's the uh, defending Western Conference champion, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dallas Mavericks, right? And this is. Yeah. So this team is so interesting to me because obviously they made a big move in the offseason in grabbing this guy, uh, Clay Thompson. Woo! For the first time in his career, he's going to be playing without his splash brother. He's no longer in Golden State, obviously. Um, this is a guy who excels in moving without the basketball, excels in catching suit situations, one of the purest shooters the league has ever seen. And, um, well, I'll say everything is different for him, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So you're going to see some nights like, like you saw a couple of nights ago where he was, I think, 0 for 9 from the field, 0 for 6 from 3. You're going to see some nights like that. Also, he's aging, right? But there's going to be times when, you know, shooters don't forget how to shoot. But at yeah. the same time, everything is different, right? From the colors on the floor to, you know, the way the arena looks behind the basket. All those things can affect a shooter. And it can, it can, it can have some effect on him. But as you can see, Clay can still shoot it when he gets going, right? I think he had 11 last night, um, shot the ball well. So I'm just looking. I think that's a huge addition. My problem is they can play this way now, but when Luka gets back, who is super ball dominant, doesn't move well without the basketball, and he's something of a ball stopper, how is that going to work, right? Clay Thompson is a guy who's played his entire career in generally free-flowing offensive systems and even, even – when it wasn't that he played a lot of pick and roll um type ball with uh mark jackson as the head coach but for most of his career he's played a ton of um really free-flowing uh, basketball heavily predicated on on movement cuts um passing and all that but luca doesn't play that way and so i am curious to know i think this is really going to test um the amount of what's the word i'm looking for i don't want to say power but um, it's going to test how effective Jason Kidd can be as a head coach in Dallas 
because I would assume Jason Kidd being the incredibly cerebral basketball mind that he is, I would assume that Clay coming over, he would have sat him down and said, hey, let's talk about some of the stuff you did offensively, some of the sets you ran, some of some of how your system works, right? And incorporate that into what they are doing there in Dallas in order to not only make Clay comfortable, but to maximize his skill set while playing with Kyrie and Luca. But the question is going to be, is Luca going to want to do it, right? We know Luca's a guy that likes to dribble out the clock and it's basically high screen and roll or, you know, he's going to take some deep step back three or he, he's going to drive and kick kind of like LeBron without the athleticism and more of a jump shot, right? So it's it's really going to be curious to me to see um, just how much weight Jason Kidd holds as a head coach uh, for that franchise because they are going to need to change some things in order – for them to maximize what Klay Thompson can do. But if they can do that, I think he's a very healthy addition to this team. Obviously, he can't defend like he once could. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what it is. But I think that um, this is a very good team. I'm not so sure if they will have the luck or the ability to repeat as um, conference champion. But this can be a very good team. Well, I think, I think to add to what you're saying, you know what I mean? I, I agree. Obviously, you have to. You don't. You don't. You don't acquire a piece like Clay Thompson without figuring out how to incorporate him and get max, you know, um, production out of him. So mm -hmm. I believe that it will figure out ways to incorporate him. My only worry with a Clay Thompson is much like you said, Clay's game seems to be more. He seems to be more in flow rather when there's a lot of movement in the offense and he can move around. Mm -hmm. We know that he without a dribble you know what i mean his catch and shoot is crazy but i don't know about clay just standing around without motion and that's the problem with a a ball centric offense like luca likes you know to run and like Kyrie will like to sometimes get into his nyc bag and he's just dribble 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 you know what i mean so that's 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 going to be the thing but i i think that you cannot go too far away from offensive sets that put luca at his strength just to benefit clay thompson and his flow, even though you're going to need him. So you cannot have the issue was relying too much on Luca. You know what I mean? In the conf I mean, in, in, in the finals, even, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he was able to put his cape on and get them to the finals playing the way that he plays. But when, again, you have these coaching adjustments, film adjustments made, they're going to have to be able to rely on a full free flowing offense that even opens the floor for Kyrie to get into his bag. The lobs are going to be a huge part of their offense still. I think that Clay's uh, threat that he's offering from the outside, though, can be a huge plus. But, again, they have to figure out how to get more motion in that offense to, to benefit him, to keep him active, because you can't just wait on him until the end of the game to finally then say, mm -hmm. all right, go out and get us one, even though millions of dollars to do so, transform. Right. You know what I'm saying? However, there still needs to be some free-flowing offense there. Yeah, so I agree. I, I'm, I'm still high on, on Denver. I'm finishing number three this season. I think that they figured some things out last year. They come out. I think they have more fun in their offense this year. So they come out and just kind of uh, uh, do much of what they did last year, but incorporate more of the things that they did in the in the postseason that they did not um, get a chance to incorporate much during the regular season. I think they figured some things out about themselves and their personnel that will benefit mm -hmm. them this season. But, again, that still leaves them to a bunch of film footage that teams will get a chance to break down and be ready for them and be prepared. So, Clay Thompson is literally going to be their linchpin, in my in my opinion, how they incorporate him. Mm -hmm. No, I like it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to respond to Bruce real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Mike Brown's an underrated coach, and there's a reason for that. Your guy LeBron got him fired after winning 60 plus games. So you know, there's that. But yes, Mike Brown is an underrated coach. Say again. <clears throat> Nothing. No, I'm, I'm gonna move past. I'm not. It's not a LeBron James conversation. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No. You said what you said, but we're gonna go ahead and move on because hey, our, our 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 friend right here, our our co-host here, Q, doesn't want to hear any type of slander in that retrospect. You understand me? Okay. That's All right. right. We're gonna go ahead and right. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my voice out of this voice real quick, and I'm gonna get into the fact that <laughs> I don't have Dallas doing much during the season. Because I think it's going to be a lot of figuring out to do, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a lot of figuring out. You got older. 
right, when you added Clay Thompson. But you also got less defensive, right? Now you have a one through three that neither one of y'all can play defense. Clay is old. Clay's not going to stick. He's not the, the two way player that he was from the defensive standpoint. Kyrie Irving's not going to guard anybody. We know Luka is the most blown by player in NBA history at this point, right? <laughs> so I think I think at this point, right now, defensively during the season, you're going to have a lot of issues there to the point while you're trying to figure out your offense, that's going to cause you to lose a lot of games, right? Now, I say that all to say in the playoffs, I think that's why you get a Clay Thompson, right? Because if you look at the NBA Finals, a lot of their looks were wide open. They were getting a lot of wide open looks against the Boston Celtics, the way Luka and that offense was kind of free-flowing. Nobody just couldn't hit a shot, right? So I think you get Clay there because he's been in those bright lights. He's been in those moments. How many championships he's been to? Uh, seven? Oh, he's been to six. He's got four. Been to six, got four. So he's mm -hmm. been there, done that, won a title over and over and over, and he's com coming up big in big moments when the lights were the brightest, right? So I think that's why you get a Clay Thompson. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think you get him for, okay, we want to be the best during the season. I think they're going to probably finish fourth or fifth um, the way that everything is going to be rolling. Like I said, mm -hmm. defensively, you're going to have a lot of issues, right? And offensively, you're most of the, the, the beginning of the season, you're trying to figure it out. You're talking about, okay, how can we fit Clay in here? Luca, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like, like you guys mentioned, is Jason Kidd going to have that talk with Luca? You know what I mean? Like, how we're going to have to move, we're going to have to move the ball around some days. Hey, try to, hey, let Kyrie take control today. Let's see mm -hmm. how that offense works. Let's see if we can get you started playing off the ball a little bit more. Then next game, you know, we'll, we'll try to swap it out. But like I said, it's going to be a lot of figuring out. For the Dallas Mavericks, that's where that's why I don't have them finishing in my top three. Like I said, maybe yep. fourth or fifth is where they're gonna finish during the season. But I do think they're gonna figure it out close to the end of the season as they're approaching the uh, the playoffs and truly can be a problem because when you look at the team top to bottom, they have a championship caliber type of squad. As you saw, as you guys see, they just made it to the championship. They just couldn't they couldn't knock down big shots. You know that mm -hmm. that could that could really keep that uh that series close against Boston. Well, I don't yeah. even think it was that. Didn't they get blown out? What three out of the five games was it? It went five, right, gentlemen? Sweep. So yeah, they got one. They go five. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they got blown out like three times. So, yeah, but I'm, if you look I'm, at the beginning yeah. of the games, mm -hmm. it was a lot. I'm like, who couldn't hit a shot? It's like okay, you know, okay, and you okay, saw okay. Luca kind of shrugging his head, like, mm -hmm. "Come on, man! Like, yo, help me out!" And then on top of that, Luca mm -hmm. was playing. I believe he was hobbled at that point. Um, mm -hmm. he got hurt right. in the previous series. So, yeah. go ahead, Q. Right. No, I was going to oh, say, okay, right. you were saying right, right, right. Yeah. So, you know, he, he was hurt. I, but I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was, he was, he was definitely hurt a little bit, but you know, he, like at the beginning of those games, folks could knock down shots. And I think that was a key on why, you know, Boston went on those runs. Cause if you let Boston play with a lead, they're, they're tough. I mean, from top to bottom, they had every, they had everything going for them. You know, you got Drew Holiday. At the point of attack, you got Jalen Brown, hustler, Jason Tatum, hustler, well, in, in most cases, hustler. You know, you got Christoph Porzingis, you got Al Horford. That, that's that's tough to come back in a championship way when those guys, like I said, have that continuity to keep you away, to keep you at bay. And you guys mm -hmm. are really just struggling. You guys can't knock down shots. So right. I think that's what I have for them. Fourth or fifth um, for the regular season. And then make a, you know, you'll see the end of the year, you start getting that, that pickup of Dallas's. The things are clicking, right? Clay Thompson is getting hot. He's found his rhythm. Lucas, okay, he's feeling good. Kyrie mm -hmm. Irving in his mm -hmm. back, getting nasty, game winners. Yep. And then you'll start to see that playoff push. Mm -hmm. You know what, Transformer? Oh, I got to say this real quick. Um, okay. hold, hold on a second, Q. Transformer, I got to say this yep. real quick, man. I, I love the way uh, you reference the Celtics and you talk about the continuity. And, you know, I, I can really admire the fact that you understand what a champion looks like, you know? So anytime you you need to know what that looks like, just look to the east. Those guys in green and white will show you exactly what it looks like. 18 times over. Carry on, Q. <laughs> My bad, Transformer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, stop, bro. Wait. Go ahead and take a shot, bro. Go ahead and take a shot. Look, I was going to say to to your point, and I agree. You know, basically what you just described, you know, in all in all in all, in all you know, factualness is what happened for the Dallas Mavericks last season, where it took them through until after the All-Star break to really figure it out. And I believe they they won like they they won they were the best team after the All-Star break down yeah. the stretch. They 
out with with a huge twenty plus game, you know what I mean, or twenty twenty three out of five or something like that. So they that's that's the kind of team that they are. But I think that again they benefit from a free flowing offense that incorporates the fullness of their roster and their personnel. They'll benefit from it greatly because you cannot just rely on Luca to carry the load. How pulled or not, you know what I mean. We know that Luca's greatness when he's when he's not hobbled, but but exhaustion is a real thing, you know what I mean, especially in an elongated portion of the season, um, mm-hmm. that is the postseason. So they definitely need to have more of that free flowing offense for them throughout the regular season. They're gonna have to figure out things on the defensive end, but I like the defensive effort made. But when you dig yourself into a deep hole because you're solely relying on Luca to score all the points. Kyrie saved his for the Minnesota series because a young boy called him out. And so he, you know what I mean? He pulled the disappearing act in the finals where they really needed him to step up and be a monster, but he wasn't. So, yeah. but that's because it's so Luca dominant as a team that you're just like, Luca's going to get us across the finish line. And your best player, for the most part, should be relied on to do that for you. But they, that's not championship basketball. You know what I mean? So they, and not for this team that they have because they have a lot of good pieces even to work the ball inside out or yeah. you know what I mean have a, a more more of a free flowing offense to the basket to get those lobs and to throw the defense off balance I think Clay adds the value that they need in that regard they just have to figure out the right way to use them bro that's it that's it I like it man um real quick uh Bruce question for you because I I like how you want to Throw this in real quick. Thank you, Slick. Those Celtics championships don't count from the 60s and 70s. There's only eight teams playing against plumbers and firemen. So I'll assume you're joking because you say you're a smart basketball person. So I'm going <laughs> to ask you this. Do the Lakers championships from the early 50s and the 70s count? I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Moving right along. I mean, if you don't count them, then we'll definitely have the lead because we want a lot more posts. Never mind. Not, that's no, not my no, and, and, that, and that would be fine. And that yeah. would be fine as long as long as we as long keep as it consistent. Fair. Right? Yeah. yeah, keep it fair. Keep it fair. Because listen, man, you you know always get a Lakers respect, man. I, I hate them, but you know I I have to respect them. You know, likewise, yeah. Fuck Boston too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, right, right. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> All right, let's let's move along to uh, whoever our uh, number four team in the West would be. Toss um, up. Yeah, toss up. Who, toss who up? are you looking at? Toss up. Four at the four spot. We talking to Tulsa, man. And man, I'm sure Anthony Edwards and this mob, man, coming back will have a lot to say about that. I totally, there are a I lot totally of forgot about strong. Minnesota. Wow, very strong. I'm happy that John Moran is coming back. I'm happy that KD, mm-hmm. um, that that uh, Brad seems to be healthy coming into this season. That book is just book. I the pieces that Phoenix is somebody in chess. Like, let's talk about the Suns. are going to win it all. Suns not my, my beat. They, they that one of the top four, I think, in the West. But I think they have the potential to be so if everybody's, you know, coming out, the, the bigs, the, the big three specifically, and they're functioning on all, all cylinders. But I think that for the Suns, it's going to be really incorporating those those other young pieces that they brought in, um, those auxiliary pieces, just to make sure they flow well as a team so they're not just heavily relying on the big three. But Minnesota, man, is is man, Ant is Ant. You know what I mean? And I think that Minnesota was not a that was not just some flash in a pan that we witnessed last season. So I think that young boy comes out this year. He hits a higher level. You know what I mean? Another mm-hmm. year. The team that they have around them, man, is a very solid team. So I think that um, you know what I mean? Obviously, adding DiVincenzo, like I said, is a big deal as far as I'm concerned, because DiVincenzo was was nearly 18 points a game last year um mm-hmm. you know york so i think that that 18 points that he adds is cool i love that julius randall is basically coming into play essentially the same cat role so they don't lose anything by losing cat julius both of them rebounders but julius is actually a better rebounder than cat so i think that they don't yeah. they don't really fall too far off i think that their role players are going to be really integral for what they do this year and also with a aging point guard situation i think this i think that the kid dillingham may get mm. some burn yeah his value to this team in the here and Great now point. later on i mean right out the gate man dillingham is a beast he's a, he's a young beast and i think he's going to get a lot of chance out there and play into exercise 
you know what I mean, in the flow of offense with, with this team and the way they go. So I'm really high on Minnesota, actually. And I think that they could, just like last year's parity, if you go back and look at the standings, there were there were there were one, two games in those teams that were top four from flip-flopping and having that thing look any kind of a way. So I think that that remains the same this year. I'm high on Minnesota, bro. Minnesota's the truth. Those boys yeah, I, I, right. my bad. Much like you said, City is going to be them. Just to finish up here, Bruce, just like Oklahoma City, they're still a young team in Minnesota. So they, they don't quite know what it takes to get it done, to close out a series, to win, to, to keep your foot on their neck, to not come out and play from behind. So so mm-hmm. hopefully they learn I, and just referencing that starting five docu-series, Ant's disappointment and the way that he talked about, you know, kind of how they 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 dropped the ball and they, they wet the bed. You know what I mean? So I think that he comes back motivated this season to to be better and the personnel that they have around them and they didn't lose a step at all, but they got better actually in effect from a roster standpoint. Okay. Um, let me just uh, respond to Steve real quick. I don't understand this Rudy Gobert slander. I, I really don't understand the Rudy Gobert slander. Why is no one talking about the coaches that consistently put him in terrible positions with horrible defensive scheming instead of this stupid nonsense of switching everything and teaching them how to play defense the way we all grew up playing defense? If you allow your team to switch the pick and roll every time, of course Gobert is going to look bad. He is a legitimate old school rebounder and rim protector. He's not supposed to be out there defending freaking guards and wings on the perimeter. That's not his job. That's not what he's supposed to do. Just the laws of physics alone make it very difficult for him to do that at his size. It's silly. We got to stop the Gobert slander. If you get a coach that act. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Can I help you? Um, yes, sir. I don't. I, I, I want to phrase this correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the NBA like? What, what What is the NBA promoting? Sort of something similar to the NFL. And I think you're going to pick up on what I'm saying. Okay. What do they promote more? Offense. Scoring. Scoring. Yes. Scoring. Yes. That, Sorry. right? Mm-hmm. Rudy doesn't have that. And I think that's why people label him the way they label him. Because... When you look at the offensive side of the ball, the man provides you nothing at all. Right? It's nothing. No. Right? I mean, he doesn't fit in any scheme, right? You, you, you get him out of the box because, like, okay, now you're just clogging up space. You can't shoot. You don't have a hook. You don't have a post move. I was about really to say, if you, give it to him on the, if you give it to him on the block, like, he's not terrible. But he gets modern coached. basketball does not believe in giving bigs the ball on the block for the most part. Unless yeah. they're, you know, really special guys. And I agree, Gobert is not he, bad, but. When he does get the ball down there, it's just mm-hmm. not, it doesn't look good at all. It looks clumsy. It's just it, like, there's no rhythm to it. It's And when he's b- battling guys like your ADs, your MBs, your Jokic's, they just bump him. And all of a sudden, Rudy mm-hmm. Gobert missing it, trying to catch his own rebound, another put back. You know, he's trying to do all that. And I think at that point, you're like, okay, well, let's just kind of hide you offensively. And you just focus primarily on defense. And like you said, it doesn't help that now he's switching on pick and rolls. He has to go out there and guard Luca at the thirty foot line. Yes. So he's going to get cooked there. So exactly. like you kind of that's going to look losing bad. him. And the yeah. reason why you have him in the game now, you just don't have no reason to have him in the freaking game to begin with. He can't help you offensively, and now he's switching on pick and rolls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that's why we get a lot more Rudy Gobert slander because that right there, you can't give me nothing offensively. You switch on pick and rolls, you get cooked. Then do a better job coaching him. Do a better job coaching him. Yeah. Don't allow him to be in those situations. But I don't disagree with anything you just said. You, you make a lot of sense there. Yep. And didn't he get choked out? What was that cat? Did, did, did <sighs> no, Draymond choke bad. him out? You that just got bad. bitched in the middle of the basketball game. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. I, I'm was... telling you, I, I, I don't. I, maybe that's just not Gobert's <laughs> personality. Draymond would have had to see me. Oh, he Dray would have. Oh boy. Me. Every and Kat, time we Kat played, would have them hands too. Um, I'm like, Kat, bro, what you doing? So, so I don't know if you saw it this off season. Um, Gobert was like training in kickboxing. Yeah, yeah, I saw the footage. I'm like, I hope he kicked Draymond in his head. I can't stand Draymond. That dude is one of the fakest tough guys ever. <laughs> terrible, terrible. My man lucked well, into one of the most beautiful situations of all time, and he thinks he's something he's yeah. not. 
Yeah, let, well, well, let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah, let's hope the kickboxing helps his footwork or something. You know what I mean? But he, <laughs> boy, he's yeah. not a he's not a he's not an offensive player at all. You know what I mean? But to Rudy's credit, you mm -hmm. know, to be able to contribute twelve points a game, which was his average last season, is yeah, solid. He can do that. To be able to rely upon him to at least give you the Put cleanup that. bucket. I mean, where they mm -hmm. are, right? What yeah. I would like to see Robert do, I know, I, I know what he's going to do defensively. I know that he's not, as most people are pointing out in the chat. You know what I mean? He he's kind of he's kind of frail in there, and and he loses a lot of the big center matchups, which is to be expected when you have such skilled bigs in the league. You know what I mean? But when you're looking at him up against an AD, up against a Jokic, up against an MB, he's going to pale in comparison because he mm -hmm. those. Incredibly skilled, so we got to give credit where it's due. Also, not to just say, man, Rudy's some ass. It's like, mm -hmm. you no, know, those players are really good. You know what I mean? So he he holds his own in that regard. Where I would like mm -hmm. to see him increase, you know, I'd like to see him block at least two more shots a game and get more rebounds. To only average nine rebounds a game at his size to me is the travel. Like, bro, you should be getting more boards down there, knowing again that you're at a disadvantage. And you're at the mercy of all these offensive players. So at least hold your ground, body up where you need to be, turn, box out. You know what I mean? And get more boards. So I, I don't like the fact that he he can't be relied on to grab 15 boards a game. Like as, as big as this cat is and as yeah, active as yeah. he you know what I mean, off the ground, I think that he should be grabbing these point. 15 boards a game. Fresh, that's like, a good point. Andre Drummond can do it. Why can't he? Right. No, that's a good he point. Be, he should be leagues above everybody else in terms of how many boards – he cleans up, you know what I mean? So I'm just mm -hmm. saying based on his position and the majority of the time where he's just at the mercy of these defenders you know, or these offensive players, rather, as a defender, mm -hmm. he's getting more boards than he's getting. You know what I mean? So that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah. all right, cool. So that's that's the top four in the West. Um, before we go ahead, my bad. Were you did you not get it? I'm sorry. No. It's okay. My bad, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just over here, you know, admiring you guys, you guys' takes on Minnesota Timberwolves. Whoa, whoa, but I whoa, think whoa, I... whoa. <laughs> Stop that voice, man. What are we doing? Well, you know, because I've been No, 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 no. Stop doing that. It's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm going to HR. <laughs> Pet daddy. <laughs> What's going on? It's a, it's a cat, cat daddy. Cat daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I, I like Minnesota. Man, it's going to be a toss-up, bro. I think once we get past the three – the three spots in the West, man, it's going to be a toss up. You got Minnesota, you got uh, you got Memphis, who's going to make a resurgence with Ja Morant. Welcome you got back, the Phoenix. Ja. Welcome back, Ja. You know, you got the Phoenix Suns. It's a lot of it's going to be a lot of competition. Uh, anyway, like from three to eight, it's, it's going to be a lot of competition uh, for those spots. But anyway, we're, we're school mentality, basketball flavor that you really truly get from Anthony Edwards. On the court, I truly love this kid. Off the court, I just wish he did more research before people start asking him questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I'll give AE. But I, I do like the man's toughy, toughness. Mm -hmm. I don't consider what he says off the court cocky. I consider that competition. Bro, just like that. Like, you know, when he came on the Olympic team, now nah, bump that. We playing through me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, nah. And he showed that when it was his turn to get in those Olympic games. Like, even with Jason Tatum being the champion on that mm -hmm. team, he like when the when the ball got into play, he clapping for the ball. Give me the ball, right? Like this is my time to shine. I'm taking advantage of these minutes. I'm on this big stage with y'all, and I'm next to y'all. I'm not. I don't need to be coming off the bench. I shouldn't be coming off the bench. That's his mm -hmm. mentality, man. And you gotta love a kid that 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 has that sort of mentality, right? But anyway, but I I, I do like everything uh, that Minnesota has, with the exception of their one addition of Julius Randle. Like I said before. I just don't trust him in the playoffs. Um, mm -hmm. He kind of like fades to black a little bit when when the lights get brighter. Um, but I do like Dante DiVincenzo um, and that just toughness, aggression um, to go along with AD. You got AD who's just an alpha. You got uh, DiVincenzo who's an alpha, like those type of dogs that can truly – just bother your backcourt in the, in its entirety and you know you lose cat but you still got Nas Reed who's still a beast mm -hmm. down there in the post it can knock down the three ball to uh you know help out Rudy Gobert so I think when you add you have those three cogs in the center and you got that toughness that you have at the uh in the backcourt I mean you're truly going to be a threat bro I mean honestly the sky's the limit I want to see AE be in that top four um 
or top three. Like I said, OKC is going to be up there. I think Denver is going to be up there. I think Dallas is going to be like around that four. So Minnesota or Phoenix, um, we're getting, uh, we may get on Phoenix here in a little bit, but they, they could definitely battle it out for that three or four, right? For that, for that spot. But yeah, man, I, I, I like that team. I do like yeah, that me, team. No doubt, no doubt. Bruce, of what we're trying to I agree with you 100%, bro. I just want to address what um what, what Steve is saying in the chat about, you know, is, is the defensive player of the year not expected to be, you know what I mean, the, the guy who shores up things on the on, on the defense. Yeah, yeah, that's the expectation, bro. I agree 100%. But again, an expectation is one thing, but the reality is, yeah, he's defensive player of the year. And it's not just because of him shutting down, um, you know, the bigs. It's because of his entire body of work with the boards, with the blocks, yeah. you know what I mean, and all that. So maybe unfairly the voters gave him a few that he probably should not have gotten. But, but Rudy Gobert is still a decent defensive player as a big playing against these very skilled big men in the league. I, I'm from the era when I began watching basketball with Hakeem, with David Robinson, with – Patrick Ewing, who are very skilled as offensive players, but they were not they were not the kind of bigs that could stretch the floor like these guys stretch the floor these days to have you lingering outside the paint. If if yeah. it was just about in, in the paint play, that would be different. You know what I mean? But it's not just about in the paint. In the paint, Rudy Gobert holds his own for the most part. You're not going to shut down a Jokic. You're not going to shut down an MB. You're not going to shut down an AD. You're just not going to shut these guys down because they're, they're just too skilled as basketball players. So he holds yeah. his own. His issue is when he's on skates out there away from the paint. You know what I mean? That's exactly. Yeah. Out there away from that paint when your comfort zone is back to the basket because it limits the amount of space that you have to move around and where mm -hmm. these offensive players can actually move. There are no dreams in the league in terms of footwork. Jokic might be the closest in terms of giving you multiple moves down there with the footwork. And beat. But, um, but you know what I mean? Rudy Gobert, it, yeah, he's expected as defensive player of the year to 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 be a cog in the middle which i think that he's he, he does it he does an effective job you know what i mean but in fairness you know these other guys are skilled man I always just like to get flowers where they do these, these other guys are just skilled man they're incredible these these well, we're watching some great basketball which is why i i would hope that the mainstream media would take more time and why i'm, I'm grateful for the independent media space so we can actually give flowers where they're due let's make sure that we're celebrating great people and not just pronouncing you know what i mean and, and smacking an ass cap on everybody because they are getting fried by individuals man who will fry anybody you know what i'm saying so that, that was i just wanted to add that in but, but steve, steve I, I agree with you bro yeah you're right ad should have won that uh defensive player of the year last year but that's a, that's just me go ahead All right, so quick, quick 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 pushback on um q so patrick you it's funny you named patrick ewing you named dream you named d rob all three of those guys, and if you also add in Alonzo Mourning, all three of those guys were bigs who could stretch the floor. Now, they weren't shooting threes back then because that's not what bigs were expected I mean, to do. That's what, I, that's what I mean by stretch. I mean, I mean they're okay, not out there okay. on the three-point line making you all I got you. out there is what I'm saying. But they, right, they were I was 15 like, to 17. Right. All those guys were automatic from – yeah, okay, cool. Got you. <laughs> Yes, Edward. Hakeem is the dream. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Hakeem, your dream. Hakeem, your dream. <laughs> yes, Edward. That that is classic. Um, man, Bruce, you you got me stuck with that for life, bro. But it's all good. Um, no. So, um, I, I was playing a, I was playing a, a clip earlier while Transformer was talking. I apologize. I hit the wrong one. So he was talking about Minnesota, and I was actually um thinking about Memphis and kind of the return yeah. of uh, John Morant. And Threw so, <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it now. This could be a very dangerous team. Um, we know when he's at the top of his game, what what an elite guard he is in this league. And what I really like his NBA game. And as you saw, even at seven three, he really got up, you know, to the rim to catch that alley oop. So if he can be, you know, half decent on defense too, I think he can be a really impact player for Memphis, and that can get those guys. And again, we we make all these predictions predicated on health, man. <laughs> Bruce, man, please, you ain't got no money to get, man. Oh <laughs> uh, man, but no. Um, what I was gonna say, yeah. So uh, Memphis, I think is is another pretty dangerous team that we've got to keep in mind. And again, the, the West is interesting because we have no idea how that's gonna shake out. But 
No I, idea. I think they can be. I think they can be very good. Desmond Bain, um, very good player. Uh, they obviously they got rid of the distraction of uh, Dylan. What's his name? They got rid of him last year. The guy that's always going Dylan out Brooks. With the Dylan Brooks. Yeah, Dylan Brooks. So they got rid of that distraction. So they're, they're still a very good team. And again, they got their main guy back. So if he can stay out of trouble and stay healthy and stay on the floor, that's another one. Um, some really good guards out West, man. Um, just imagine the matchup we're going to have when Memphis plays against Minnesota or Minnesota oh, yeah. versus OKC or Memphis versus OKC, right? Those matchups at the one or at the two or even Golden State, right? With Steph, like those are really good freaking matchups out there. So uh should be very interesting to see how those play out. Um, yeah, absolutely right, man. Yeah. I think so, that, that John Morant ver- – oh, man, go ahead, Q. Go ahead. You got it. Go ahead. Go ahead finish your thought. No, you got it, bro. Go ahead. No, I was going to say the, the, uh, that goes back to the parity of uh, with, with last season. So it's the same thing. You know, the, the, the way that the season shook out, you know, from uh, a standings perspective last season, I expect it really to play out, you know, much of the same way in the West and the Eastern Conference. I don't think that I don't think that we're going to see anybody just run away with with the conference and and it it be kind of a a dog fight for just like two spots in that um you know in that conference um you know what I mean from 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 um say six down seven down already established last year it was this, it was this, literally but man when I tell you it was the same thing bro I mean the parity in that western conference literally had just like in the east in that those top six teams one win two wins different you could have had anybody at number one number two number three so the separation wasn't really that drastic and so a team goes on a win streak doesn't unfortunately have a situation where They've lost, you know what I mean, their main guy um, at a critical point of the season. And you could see a Memphis, you know what I mean, sneaking into the top five. You could potentially see a Sacramento sneak in there. You could potentially see a Steph Curry-led Golden State team sneak in there, in, uh, you know what I mean, up in those heights. So I think that that the West is, again, man, the parity is so beautiful out there. And this that's, that's a testament to how – uh, balance the NBA teams are as a whole in both conferences, man, that I think has me excited to watch this NBA season. I think it's going to be one of the better seasons, actual seasons, with teams grinding it out, you know what I mean, the fight for playoffs spots than, than we've seen in a long time. No, no, I like it. I like it. No, what I was going to add is that, uh, Bruce, you mentioned uh, mm-hmm. the, the Minnesota versus Memphis series. Yes, I yes. think that's going to be some of the best watch basketball I think so. NBA. Yeah, John Morant those. and AE because who was supposed to be the face of the league? John, John Morant. Morant, who screwed it. Yeah, John Morant, right? Who's now turning into the face of the league? Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Edwards. And yeah. so John Morant's like, "Well, I was suspended, mm-hmm. and then I got hurt. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, y'all forgot about me? Y'all forgot right? about me? And so you forgot me about you. me? Yeah. Let me remind you. So I think that's going to be one of the like I'm marking that on my calendar. Memphis versus uh, Minnesota. Those are going to be some great games if John Moran and Anthony Edwards are healthy. I expect mm-hmm. both of them to give you 30, 35 plus in every single game that they play against each other this season. I think right. that's going to be getting some of the best basketball of the season right there. Yeah. Um, so I keep seeing um, first of all, Brandon, man, your your freaking obsession with these DC teams is killing me. <laughs> Wizards are trash, they'll always be trash. They're never gonna be good. They'll be trash until we die. Stop talking about the wizards. Okay. Trey Cal Kuzma. Jeez. Uh, so Steve keeps bringing up um, the Suns. We're sleeping on the Suns. Nobody's sleeping on the Suns. Nobody believes in KD if he's not in Golden State. Plain and simple. That's it. He might be an outstanding player. <laughs> he might be one of the best offensive players of all time. That's fantastic. But the empirical evidence is what has he done outside of Golden State? He went to one finals. He lost it. Other than that, it's like, okay. Like, like, come on, man. The empirical evidence is there. He's not that guy. He's not getting it done outside Golden State. He keeps trying to go places, and you keep seeing the failure. Whatever the situation's around it, I'm sure there's plenty of context, and there is, but nah, he he just hasn't gotten it done. Now, that said, you mentioned um, if they give him a point guard, and I think they did. Who, they did. who would yeah. be that guy? Tyus Jones? Like, Tyus Jones, yeah. So, so look, so Bruce. That's not going to get it done. 
I, I, so look, so it remains to be seen. So, so Steve about to be, Steve about to be the homie because I agree, right? And this is just being objective. Okay. I, you can go body of work with KD and what he hasn't been able to do since leaving Golden State, but you can mm-hmm. also situation. We're just looking at situational basketball and with what the mm-hmm. structure they actually have. I like their addition. The, the additions that they made this this season to shore up all of the holes and the deficiencies that they had in their offense last year, even against the Lakers in preseason last night, man, they look like a they look like a different team, bro. They look like mm-hmm. a different. So I am curious. I'm out here in Phoenix. I am curious right. to have playoff atmosphere basketball back out here meaningfully. So I'm curious to see how it all plays and how well it works. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. No, bro. You know what I mean? It's not like a sh- it's not like a long shot. I don't think. You know what I mean? Respectfully, there's so much parity in the West. But if you have a decent team put together, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And they have a decent team put together now around the big three, and not just a bunch of minimum guys that you're hoping to get something out of. That that's highest addition at point guard takes book off the ball and allows book to play the game that he plays from a strength standpoint for him offensively, mm-hmm. which is a big deal. That's a big deal, bro. It's it a big deal. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good season. No, nah, man, you I, think, I you agree. Think Holder makes a difference. I think that coach Bud definitely makes a difference. He took a championship off of Phoenix. It's only right that he comes back and helps him. You know what I mean? At least man, get, get back into some sort of, legitimacy in terms of being able to compete <laughs> okay no man yeah i agree bro you you can't you can't you kind of sleeping on sons a little bit brother i think okay. you know with mike Budenholzer, you add in a coach a valuable coach a championship mm-hmm. winning mm-hmm. coach right you have kd you have devin booker you have uh bradley bill but you added an important piece in tyce jo- tyce jones to mm-hmm. help bradley bill not bring that fucking ball up court because boy Mm-hmm. That was horrible. <laughs> like last year, what we saw was horrible. But on top of that, the biggest keys on why they were awful last year, dumb folks couldn't stay healthy together, right? Like you, you mm-hmm. get those three pieces, you trade all your depth away, but you guys couldn't see the floor at the same time. On top of that, right. you have a point guard issue. Then you have a depth issue. This year, I think yeah. they still have a little bit of a depth issue, but they at least fixed the point guard retrospect, and you guys are all coming together healthy, right? You're coming into the season. All three of you healthy, so I do expect that they're going to be a much better basketball team because, yeah. like, like, uh, like you stated, Bradley doesn't have to bring the ball up the floor. All right? right, that was a nightmare. Him bringing the ball up the floor. Yes, anybody in the NBA can pass the ball. I, I, any any NBA player can go out there if he's controlling the tempo. If they're playing through him, he can get assists. That doesn't make you a point guard, right? It, it, there's a huge difference on you having that ability to just orchestrate a team. Not rely and they're not relying on you to do much of anything else, right? Point guard Ty, Tyce Jones is one heck, heck, of a, heck of a point guard. And I think he's put in that position to help now put Bradley Bill in those situations to where okay, you you're, you're a spot up shooter. If I kick it to you, nice little drive, kick back, KD. Uh, you got Nurkic down there, get your rebound. At that point, we have four people on the floor that can knock down threes, right? So <coughs> I do think they're going to be uh, uh like definitely fighting for that uh. That four, five, six. I, like I said, that, that that three through six, seven. That's gonna be tough, uh, man. That's gonna be a tough, yeah, tough, dog. tough conference, bro. It, it truly that. is, man. But they had to make some well, and um, and again, you know, I just feel like realistically, yeah, sure, they're not gonna go deep on their bench, but they really don't have to. KD is a is a hooper. Bill yeah. is a hooper. Uh, uh, D book is a hooper. So these guys like to play. You can get them burned. You can give them minutes. They don't get tired. They, they want to be mm-hmm. out there. It's not a liability when they're out there. KD is not anybody's in, uh, 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 defensive player of the year candidate, but KD is lengthy enough to be a problem for shooters and also a rebounder down there to be a problem. You know what I mean? From a standpoint of them long ass arms and shit, making it difficult for bigs either. You know what I mean? Yeah. To get shots off or guards to come down that lane and get shots off. So, yeah, I think I think the Suns are dangerous. They, they I think they can be they can present a, a real issue in the West this year, bro. Honestly, I and it's not just because I'm it's not Phoenix. No, 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 I got you. Saying, yeah, yeah, I do believe. Yep. I do think they get outmatched in the playoffs though, because like depth, the, the, you don't have the depth, right? And you guys have a bad injury history. You know, right. Devin Booker, hamstrings, Bradley so Bill, hamstrings, knee. 
You well, know what I, was, I mean? So I think you lose one of those guys in that playoff yeah. series, you're you're cooked. Yeah. So 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 two things. One to last season, right? Yeah. Keep in mind season was their first year coming together. So that was an experiment, that was the experimental phase. But moving right. forward to the comment just now, keep in mind we still haven't there's there'll be additional trades made and pieces moved and pieces acquired, you know what I mean, by the trade deadline as well to to shore up whatever other holes they have or to help strengthen in ways that they have to coach bug gets a chance to kind of see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it is. I like Coach Bud back to Bruce's question. The reason that I like Coach Bud being out there because Coach Bud has that let it fly mentality, and you got a bunch of shooters and a bunch of bona fide buckets, bro. So he, that offense is about to be um, – it's, what can they stop is going to be the question. Can they stop anybody? Can they stop a runny nose out here? You know what I mean? That's going to be the big deal. But scoring yeah, the ball, continuity on offense and all that stuff, I think will be, be much better for them this year. Much better, bro. And Devin Booker got a taste of that. It's not a championship, but he got a gold medal. So he got yep. that. Hey, man. Hey, whoa, wait a minute. I'm, I'm in that, you know, playing with my partner KD. We out, we both out here. We got that gold medal. Let's see if we can have some of that runoff on us, you know, keep, keep that championship mindset of what, what they have and bring that to the team. So it could it could be big for them. I, I like I like them this year. Like I said, I don't think I don't have them finish them high, but I do think that they're gonna be in that, you know, between that that four, five, six, seven, eight. That spot, I think it's going to be a lot. Of, it's going to be a lot of great teams in the uh, West, man. For sure, for sure. All right, there we have it. Let's, um, you know what? I, I was going to move the sleepers, but it's almost disrespectful to not mention the Lakers, right? Because yeah. you all know, obviously, I'm not a Laker guy, nor am I a LeBron guy, but any <laughs> team he's on. And with the way Anthony Davis is playing now, um, it would be – I would be surprised if they ended up in the play-in again. I think that's a solid basketball team, although I have major questions about their coaching. <laughs> um, we all do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think yeah. that's problematic, but <laughs> I don't think we can we can ever count out a LeBron team, right? Um, however I feel about him as a player – Regard, there are certain things that are evident and you can't you can't count that team out. And um, obviously there's been a lot of who there's been a lot around the Lakers this past offseason. But what I wanted to touch on and show some love in terms of the Lakers is um, real quick. I wanted to take a minute for this guy. Um, we've been talking so much about Bronny and yeah. what he's doing or not doing. I wanted to show this guy some love. Because he worked out last night, man. He balled out for the Lakers. I mean, we're just watching him, and it's beautiful to finally see somebody not named James get some attention on this on this roster. And I mean, he's showing why he was a first round draft pick in the NBA. Right. Now, are we expecting him to get 35 a night? Of course not. Negative. But no. He is showing that he has what it takes to be a quality contributor for this team. And um I mean, I like it. I think with proper minutes, he can probably be a 15 point per game guy. And so, um, yeah, 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 no doubt. And so, um, this is a guy. Look at that catch! Boom, really, that was nice. So this is this is the type of guy that um, he can be a quality contributor. And I think the Lakers can end up anywhere between that, like five and ten in the West, right? Which is crazy. They can be a top eight seed. They can be in the play-in. We have no idea what they're going to be or where they're going to end up. But I do feel it's it's disingenuous and disrespectful to talk about these top playoff teams in the West and not mention the Lakers as a possibility of being there. That's just what it's going to be. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that I um, I talked about them because I always have the ability to to do something and upset the apple cart. The only thing... I would really push back. I mean, I know we always talk about how amazing it is that LeBron's doing what he's doing at age 39 going on 40, and it is. The only thing I would really say in fairness is that we know, and and um, Transformer knows this even more as, as a guy who is um, uh, very well acquainted with the human body as a, as a personal trainer and knowing muscles and knowing how the body reacts, so on and so forth. It's a lot more difficult to heal at that age when you have all that mileage on your body. Yes, he takes tremendous care of himself and his body, but I am in all fairness concerned that a smaller injury that somebody could bounce back from 
could be a major injury for him at that age. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that could, um, I think that can, uh, um, hurt him, but I think that, uh, yeah, the, the Lakers are a team that man, they can be anywhere between five and 10. And once, you know, once they get into the tournament, you never know what can happen, especially if they avoid the Denver matchup, not avoid like duck it, but avoid like the way the seating plays out. Yeah. No, I agree, man. I, I didn't have them. Um, I didn't mention them on purpose because I don't think they're a best of the West team. They're not going to finish in the top four. And for me, best of the West is the top four, right? Best right. of the East, top four. I'm so I'm mm-hmm. thinking strictly top four. I agree with you. I have uh, the Lakers finishing anywhere from between five to nine because throughout the season, they don't care. And I've noticed that from LeBron James throughout his career ever since he went back to Cleveland. He doesn't, the, the regular season to him doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter as much as like I need to be a, number one seed a number two seed a number three seed just get me to the fucking dance right mm-hmm. and at that point right. now right. we can right. really turn it on right mm-hmm. so I, I think you know we we've seen that and they were like oh man the lakers made it you know made it to a play in well you had to make it to a play in and get it they were gonna get in right they, they made it to the they made it they made it to the playoffs and they made a deep run uh the previous year and then they got bounced out by the same team last year granted mm-hmm. we got beat in the first round but to me that was a good thing because i'm like if we were to make the same run and we run into denver again the same the same thing was gonna happen, bro. Like Denver was the team that we were looking at as the biggest threat in the West to mm-hmm. to, I mean, to kick us out of there. So um I do I do like uh uh that we're getting a couple of key pieces back. Uh Jared Vanderbilt, he's gonna be a, one of our key defensive cogs. I hate that we missed him last year. He's dealing with two foot and both feet um injury, so he's not gonna be making it into the season for maybe for like the first month and a half or something like that. I think that's a key key piece for us defensively if you look at the previous uh playoff run we had the previous year um against the golden state series particularly that man was guarding anybody one through four and particularly steph curry he was guard he was hounding steph curry so you you want a defender like that especially as lebron gets older gets up there in age you know he's not getting he's not playing defense until the fourth quarter into the last two to three minutes when they really matter man's 40 (laughs) <laughs> right, don't, let's not expect that expectation needs to drop right he's not going to do any of that he's going to mm-hmm. get his six to eight points a quarter and he's going to finish the game with 24 to 28 and then in the last two to three minutes you're going to try you're going to see the best version of whatever lebron has left in the tank but the d the d russell thing i i'm i'm just not a fan that he's still there i i gave him i gave him uh a little love during the season last year but then again when the lights got bright yeah, he went away. yeah. He yeah went I don't away. know what and happened. I think with that. that that was a key key piece that we needed against Denver because AD going out there balling, Bron going every every our team was working, but it got to that fourth quarter. Jamal Murray gets hot. I needed D'Lo to be able to match that. Like, okay, he's knocking down a bucket. Go get a bucket, right? I can't have you going one for fourteen <laughs> when it yeah. when it matters the most, man. I just can't have it, but. I, I agree, man. Uh, all, all, all seriousness. I do have him finishing anywhere between five to nine, and that's all mm-hmm. predicated off of health entirely. Because you know, AD can go down at some point. LeBron is turning on forty; he can go down at some point. Mm-hmm. So I don't expect them. Even though last year both played, I believe seventy-two games plus yeah, um, last like season, that. so it yeah, was it was pretty was really good. good. But the expectation is that they don't repeat that. If they do, then you know, great. But I think mm-hmm. if we can get some type of trade for D'Lo and get another, you know, a, a better piece right there. Then I mm-hmm. think you know it'll it'll boost my confidence going into the postseason right, or right. even a higher seed. But yeah, so, don't so connect ball now, by the way. Yeah, so 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 to piggyback on what you're saying, you know, transform. I agree, bro. Like I've been, um, so I have the Lakers on, in the in the previous episodes that I've done about because I've done two since the summer. One I got a little antsy, so I did an incredibly premature, you know what I mean, season predictions after the free agency period closed because I I just loved what every team did in terms of moving to us. Uh, yeah. Teams, as Bruce mentioned earlier in the show, and I still haven't changed, you know, moved from 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 my 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 picks and my predictions in terms of where I think these teams are going to fall. But I put the Lakers at nine, and and I've 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 dragged the Lakers quite a bit in other videos because I'm like, as presently constructed, the Lakers are ass and blah 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 blah. So let me, with respect to Lakers Nation, to to transform and everybody else that, that's in here, because I've actually watched through the preseason, and I know that it's just a preseason. But given respect to the roster, I think that, um, one, I agree with you about D'Lo. I just want to say about D'Lo. I think D'Lo is so streaky that he's another yeah. one of the players that you have to get going early, and then yeah. you can rely on him later 
to because he's 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 still in his emotion about being you know what I mean being used and being effective when he's when he's in a slump he's in a slump you rarely well, see who you telling see him start out zero for eight and then he he picks it up he, he's, yeah. he's freaky so I think that if and unless and at this point of his career he just might be who he is right so unless you can get a D lo in positions where he's where he's effective also going to the basket to get some of those floater finishes and things like that that just get him going then they need to trade for another piece who can actually help them out in the mid range area as well. And not right. just solely relying on three, but I want to give credit to obviously you guys need Jared Vanderbilt back. We know that LeBron can't sit, sit in the chair anymore. And um, you know, rocking chair is the only chair that, that he's, he's closest to at this Pretty point, much. but absolutely he expected age. And, but so he needs the others. He need AD is, is obviously going to be AD on defense on on defense, and then having a Jared Vanderbilt type come back, uh, AR playing defense a, a, as he does, having oh, some yeah. of these other ARs men nice. that are playing D, uh, uh, Christian Wood, and some of these other guys to just give active, you know what I mean, feet and and, and just active hands around the basket and just in the passing lanes. Period. I think it's going to be good for them. But I want to give flowers to this to, to to the number seventeen overall draft pick. It wasn't just last night, you know what I mean. This is through preseason now, or mm -hmm. I'm sorry, through the season now that I that, that I watch, and now in the preseason, and he's got some age on him. And this kid's twenty three years old. Dalton Connect did arrive, y'all. Man, Dalton Connect is the truth, bro. Like I think that he's going to be an instant, you know, impact player for the Lakers. Obviously, but my biggest concern for the Lakers is. That I just don't I even though they played an enormous amount of games last year relative to the amount of games that they would typically play being A D and LeBron, I just don't trust LeBron and A D to play more than sixty games this season. I honestly don't, bro. And and that's the it's the scares A D and, and these tweaks that he gets that seem to take him out of the lineup. But for LeBron, it's his age. You know what I mean? So yeah. if they can figure out how to when you don't have LeBron at full strength and when you don't have A D at full strength, interchangeably in and out of the lineup. So one of them's playing, but the other one's not. If the rest of the team can figure out, if they can figure out how to step up and get the rest of these people, you know what I mean, the rest of these these players to help them win some games without them, then the Lakers are a completely different team than I even saw and have seen so to this point. But it's yeah. going to be predicated on all of that, man. It's the it's how the mm -hmm. rest of these players come together. And um, I think that they, they have a decent team. It's still going to be – Hinging upon what JJ Reddick can do, you know what I mean. The X's and O's on paper look good. On the Mind the Game podcast, man, all that shit sounds great. But in mm -hmm. reality, in reality, the trans on the yeah. court, and these yeah. players are doing on the court, and so that's going to be the biggest, the, the biggest key. But the Lakers don't have a completely ass roster, you know what I mean? They got some good pieces, but is it all going to work when they get on the court? But I had them at nine as well, just because I, again, I know that the, the West is a dog fight. I'm factoring in the help. And, and the and the durability of an AD, especially AD, they go yeah. they they go the way that AD goes, bro. AD is the Lakers' best player. He needs to be respected as the Lakers' best player. He is balling his fucking ass off in the, pre, in the preseason, bro. Like yeah. I think that, that if that's a sure sign of what's to come for AD this season, bro, the Lakers have an MVP candidate on their hands again. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, he but he balled out last year. Like even no, I, like AD AD balled out last year. It was just like. Ball Every year, bro. He does get his respect everywhere. Yeah, that's that, no, absolutely. That's a shadow thing, bro. That, that's really strange. But yeah, 80s, 80s that guy. What, what you got, Bruce? Because I see it's the steam coming out your ears. What's up? Because we're no, talking no, about no. LeBron. No, no, no. No, no. no steam. No steam. <laughs> no, no. no hey, I, man, I quick, hey, quick, 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 quick thing real quick. And I'm, I'm going to let you go, Bruce. It takes 60 seconds. You good? Man, what's up with Lakers drafting six foot five white men? We're great at it. Yeah. Alice Caruso, Austin Reeves. Dalton Connect, come move it hitting on six five white boys, man. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like I, I, I noticed it. Like we saw Crusoe come out of nowhere, right? We saw Austin Reeves come out of nowhere, right? Like, like Dalton Connect, he got drafted lower, projected higher. He got drafted lower due to his age, but we're seeing Dalton Connect. We're, we're seeing it again. What's up? With, what's I don't know what's up with that, man. I, th I think it's pretty funny, man. But Bruce, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just gonna say something totally different, and not to let it, um. Uh, not to let it completely uh, <laughs> uh, redirect the discussion. I just saw uh, on my phone, it popped up uh, live Lakers versus Warriors from ESPN and listen to the headline, right? Because I have a final preseason game. Dalton Connect 
Bronny James visit Golden State in final game of preseason. Why? Why did why did they have to mention for what? Dalton Connect uh, and Bronny James. What are we doing? What are we doing? What has he done to have his name mentioned? Come on, man. This is absurd. Be the son of the goat, my king. <laughs> yeah, sad. But anyway, Be the son uh, of my king. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and um. All right, y'all. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold the calls till the till the end, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're just gonna move on to the uh, to the next section to Damn. sleepers. Y'all, good. y'all good with that? We hold the calls till the end, and then we then we take the calls. Ugh. Transform you good? No, I was looking at. Oh, okay, well we ain't playing nobody. That's why. Okay, I'm about to say we getting cooked fifty one to twenty seven, but we have nobody playing tonight. Mm. Not even Dalton. Dalton not even playing. Mm-hmm. No Bron, no Reeves, no Davis, no Christie, no Vincent, no <clears throat> Russell, no Hodgemore. God damn, damn. everybody. Right, man. Okay, okay, Laker fan. All right, all right. Just reading. I'm, I can read. 